Why, hello there, guys and gals. The Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another achievement and trophy guide. And this time we are getting it all in the Brown Pants Time, yet fantastic psychological horror game, Visage. Now, this was developed and published by Sad Square Studio, and is usually available for £29.24 slash $34.99. But, as of right now, is free if you have Xbox Game Pass. So, as I always say, get them buns on it, huns. So, <laughs> we play as a guy called Dwayne, who, as you progress through the game, get to see what a um, charming, let's say, man he was. Uh, now, this plays as a difficult game in more unconventional ways, as in, the tension is everywhere, so if you stand in the dark for too long, your insanity meter goes up, and you get mauled by a ghosty boy. Um, so, so, you always have to be looking out for light, as there is not a weapon in the game. Saying that though, achievements wise, etc, it's not an overly difficult completion, especially, uh, you know, the more you progress, the more you get used to the house and where to go, etc. Three chapters, plus seven side missions, we can call them, they're basically VHS tapes. Not many collectibles in each one, but there are some achievements that are tied to a specific chapter or VHS tape, meaning you have to do it there, otherwise you'll miss it. A few miscellaneous ones and funny easter egg achievements to go, uh, it's not a difficult completion as I said. So. I hope you're up for this one. Uh, it's a probably good game. Looking at potentially five to six hours following this guide to get it done. Maybe less, maybe a bit more, depending on the ran depending on the randomness of it. And by random, it really just depends on the ghosts and how they want to, uh, how chill they want to be with you. So, with all that being said, then now we can finally begin. So, just enjoy the first couple of moments there before we uh, begin to crapple our pencil. Which, to be honest, now with horror games, normally, you know, things like Layers of Fear, where you can follow it easily, and it's quite laughable in some circumstances. This one genuinely had me crappy my pants a lot more than most horror games, which I suppose, you know, if that's what the Sad Square Studio were going for, well, it worked well. So, as we begin then, we can just head down, you can press the left trigger to run, or jog slightly in the house. And it's basically going to keep coming up with this tutorial, so as we turn the left corner here, we're going to get our first message, which basically, it's behind the Welsh Hunter sign, on the bottom left hand corner, you will see the your sanity meter. So if you see this, um, all sort of blood red, with a brain in it, it means your sanity meter is too high and you need to get to a light, or take some pills to decrease that... Um, uh, your sanity meter. So, just heading down to the door here, this garage door. Now, you'll actually have to pick up this letter. I don't pick up this letter yet. Um, I do it later. I actually actually forget to do it here. So, pick up that letter. Um, it's literally just to get a key later on. That's all. And it's going to tell us about the randomness um, of paranormal events. Now, that can be radios turning on when you're walking past it, lights flickering on and off, etc. So, nothing too shit pantingly scary. Um, but, you know, just things to get used to. So, when you pick up this crutch right here, this begins the first chapter, uh, it's called Raken's Chapter, but we're going to get our first missable achievement, actually. Uh, you can open the door if you want, but basically we're just going to try and head out of the front door, where it's going to be jammed. You won't see me unlock it on screen, because I accidentally unlocked it first before recording, because I am a noobble. But just interact with the right trigger, uh, the main front door, and you should unlock your first achievement there for trying to get out. Otherwise, head into the living room here, have a sit down, and have a nice chill and wonder what the hell beaten ass kind of style, bean vested top kind of lifestyle this is. I uh, don't know where the hell I was going with that then, but still. So then, dun, dun, dun. nah, this bit's actually not too bad. So, you know, for the first 10 minutes of the game, it's not bad. It's just the, you know, couple of hours afterwards, which uh, gets a little tense, shall we say. So, as we begin then, again, um, press the left trigger to run. Now, to open up doors, you need to hold the right trigger and then push up or down on the left stick, depending on whether it's a push or a pull door. Which, for some reason, took me a while to figure that one out again, because I am Nubus McScubus. 
and Dulles McButthead. Uh, but yeah, that's how you open uh, up anything in this game. Uh, any doors anyway, so right trigger and then push up or down on the left stick. Uh, so you can't actually move anywhere. We're looking at Reagan right now. He's losing his nugget quite a bit. Um, yeah, he's, he's losing his tits a little bit right now. Maybe that's uh, too many uh, morning after pills and he thought they were... The, the, maybe he thought they were the other good kind of stuff. But they used to be his message as morning after pills and that's made him go a little bit loopy. See? He's just found another morning after pill and he's like, Ah, no, I can't have this. Um, I can't get pregnant. But in 2021, anyone can get pregnant, right? Right. So, head up to the next door. This one is a pull door. So, as you can see, I edited it out because it took me about two minutes to realise what a stupid man I was. So, it's the right trigger and then, of course, just hold down on your left stick. Eventually, we get there and another little cutscene with the angry morning after pill man. Where do I come up with this crap? I don't... Anyway. Is this... There you are, little piece of crap. You think you can get me that easily, huh? Nice try, you fucks! What the fuck do you want, huh? I'm right here! Those little fucks. Was he looking for the morning after pill again? His missus is hiding it. Now he's gonna go wild. He's going to beat her ass down. Anyway, head slightly back to the right here, and we're coming up to what is would be the living room until Ronald Reagan turns the corner and, uh, well, starts going nuts. What? What? So we're now going to start getting used to the inventory. So if we head right up the stairs, straight into the bathroom, we're going to see our first set of pills. These are just regular ones, not the ones that uh, get rid of babies you don't want. Um, so, <laughs> so basically, these act as a... Um, so if you start going insane and you start seeing the brain and your insanity meter starts going up, take one of them by, when it's in your hand, press the... LB or RB button, and that will take a pill and decrease your sanity. Uh, sorry, straight ahead, we're going to go into the parents' bedroom. Nice. Nice and chunky bed. Wow. And we're going to grab a lighter, which is on the desk. Now, this will come, of course, in mega handy, because when it gets dark sometimes and you can't see, using a lighter, funny enough, works. So, to get into your inventory, press the select button. And to put things away, just press the left trigger or right trigger, and that will put it away. Or you can press the A button as well, that will also put another item away. So, heading out of the bedroom, head slightly to the right, and as you can see, this is the office door. If we just turn directly around, interact with the eye on this painting, of course, this is not creepy. This is what happens in everyday normal households, red. <laughs> red. Interact with the wheelchair for another cutscene. So, yeah, in terms of um, inventory use and everything... It's kind of a weird way that the buttons work. Um, so if you've got an item that's in your hand, you, like I said, hold either the right bumper or the left bumper to use it. So that'll be everything. So lighters to pills to sledgehammers, etc. Um, if you've got an item, you've got to press the B button. If you're holding an item you want to drop, press the B button and then the right trigger or left trigger to drop it. It's, you know, we'll all come back to that later on. But as long as we've got the basics of the inventory down for now, then you should be fine, so, yeah. And of course, if you want to whip out something out of the inventory, s press select, you'll see your inventory, and then just press the A button, and it'll go into either the right or left hand. So, as is the norm in most particular horror games, we're going to start off by um, <laughs> going in a mental asylum, because... Why, why don't horror games just do things like, oh, I know, let's, let's go to a nice amusement park. Try and get away from the crazies in an amusement park. Or, you know, a fun sunny afternoon somewhere. Oh, no, they've always got the frickin' mental asylum. And what was he searching for? It's hard to tell. He refuses to answer most of our questions, claiming we already know the answers. He believes we're partly responsible for what happened. It's not really surprising. I took a look at his medical background, and he's had really bad cases of... Scopophobia. Exactly. Hmm. 
Thanks, Tim. I'll go and see him right away. Of course. He'll be in the transit wing, room 323 until further notice. He seems agitated, so be careful. Thanks, Tim. Duly noted. Ah. So, like I said, for the first part then, there's nothing too spooky, so, you know, you can keep your pants on for a minute if you want. Or take them off, it depends, it's your house. Depends how comfortable you want to be. For me, I had to take them off, but then, you know, you accidentally shit yourself, you've got to clean it up and that, and nah, that's just... Nah, I haven't got nobody to clean that up for me, I'd have to do it myself, screw that. So anyway, head through the exit door to the right, and to the left. So, it's not that easy to get lost, to be honest, but... Uh, we're heading left here at the exit sign again. And we're just going to head into the right side of this slightly ajar door. Get your buns in there. And pick up a key again. Press the right trigger and then press the right trigger again. That will put it just directly into your inventory. And just head straight down. Then we're going to be taking the next left right here. And we're going to 323. Now, to uh, get your inventory out by pressing the select button, go down to the key and you've got to press the A button, press the B button to back out of the inventory, and then you can use the door. That is a very weird way of doing that. Uh, just head into the dark room and interact there. Again, pressing the right trigger with the hole in the wall. But that is a very weird way of using things in your inventory. So you've got to actually look at something, make sure the reticle is on, whatever it is that you need. Go into your inventory, press in the select button, Press the A button on whatever you need, and then you've got to back out of the inventory, and then you can use it. So, it takes a little while to get used to, but again, not too bad. So, what we actually need to do is get a crowbar to break through the wall, but, not sure if this is a bug or intentionally put in the game, if you just head to the right side of this door, there is a way that you can just completely unlock it. There you go, you've just seen it there then. So, literally just to the right of the handle... Um, you can just unlock it from there. Again, not sure if that's a bug, or if you can just do that anyway, but, um, yeah, it saves about 20 seconds or so. Because basically the crowbar is just next to the room where we got the key, um, to get into room 23 with the slightly ajar door. Um, if you need it, I'll show you where it is now. Um, but again, head to the right here. Of course, starts going dark, because why wouldn't a psychological horror game uh, stay lit for ages? But the crowbar is in the room to the left right there, if you needed it. So head to the right down here. Again, just keep going, ignoring all the spooky darkness, and head to the left. And we can now see the uh, this room. We're having to be quick, so press select, open up the key, B to back out, and then just press the right trigger to interact with it. And the reason we were going fast is because Ronald Reagan, the morning after Pill Man, was after us. I thought I'd let you know now rather than before, because yeah, I don't want it to crap my pants yet. But, uh, well, I guess we got a fun couple of hours ready for that, so it makes no difference really, does it? So, head to the back of this room, very nicely lit up there. And pick up the torch, of course that always comes in handy, nice blood-stained hands. Make sure to pick up the key as well, the old transit wing. Uh, push the table and enter the door, because that is what you normally do in mental asylums. You always follow the bloody footprints and the bloody handprints. Yeah, because why not? Because you want to die today, right? Anyway, we've got the transit wing, so we can head through here, straight through to the exit. Sadly, it is not the exit we need. Head straight, basically like a little left and right. Ignore Ronald Reagan and his very extreme anger issues. Man, those morning after pills have gone straight to his head. Anyway, uh... Ignore the spooky wheelchair. We're basically back to the same place we just were. Uh, where we got the key and everything. But we can head straight for these double doors now. We didn't ruin your life, Raken. You ruined it when you stuck your weenie inside the family dog. I didn't even know you were into that kind of stuff, man. Jesus Christ. Anyway, head straight through. And you see Raken doing a sort of suicide jump. Except, well, he doesn't. As we interact with the window, you'll see why. So don't stick your weenie in a family dog. That's, uh... Top advice I can give for everyone right there.
Right, so we are back in the house. Our sanity is decreasing fast, so immediately head to the right. Get your inventory out again, select button, and then press the right trigger and left trigger to get your pill and your lighter out. Um, head to the left right here and sort of just stand underneath the light. Press and hold the right bumper there to get your lighter up. And if you've got too much, uh, if you're too insane, press and hold the left bumper to get your pills out as well. And that'll decrease your sanity a bit as well. So head through the door right here. And as we can see, we need to basically push two eyeballs. We need to find two eyeball paintings to be able to get through the door. So if you do have two, uh, so we're just going to head directly behind us right there on the left. And that is where the first painting is. If you've got too much, uh, if you're too insane, Raken will appear and try to smash you up soon with his crippled legs and everything because he's got crutches apparently. Uh, head down, don't go through this first door, this is the wrong one apparently. It is another door on the right, so apologies about that one. Uh, but if we just head down, this is basically where the basement is in the house. And uh, just keep going next to all the mannequins and all the piles of credsters. Press the button again. The little eyeball, there we go, nice. Not creepy at all, of course not. And there we go, so now we can get through the door. Again, remember, if you're starting to get a bit too much insane, just pop a pill and it'll decrease. And always keep your lighter out, just in case. So, there we go for that bit then. We can now head through the door, interact with the wheelchair for yet another cutscene. So apologies again if the inventory explanation in was going a little bit quick. Um... Yeah, I did try to slow it down a bit, but, uh, you know, hopefully you know exactly what to do and everything by now anyway, so... Yeah, life will be good. Life will all be good. No, <laughs> oh. hello there, Ronald Reagan. Um, that was a hell of a face. Bed all those guys there with the pigeon chest. They tell the stories that they used to bench two hundred kilos back in the day, but an injury put paid to that. Because you always see those guys, the one with the skinniest chest in the world, always used to bench 150 kilos, 200 kilos, used to squat 300. Could have been a pro strongman, but uh, injury always puts pay to it. They always take an arrow to the knee. Crazy, isn't it? So, here we go. Go back to the right through the exit door and keep heading straight on for now. There's going to be like an invisible wall for a minute while this mannequin pigeon chest thing takes off. I, I, don't, I, I assume it's meant to represent a mannequin, but... Oh, it's goddamn mannequins! Anyway, for this next bit, click the left stick in, and you will start to crouch. This is what we need to do to get past these mannequins. You can run as fast as you can. As long as you crouched, um, they won't hear a ting, but we need to pick up this key. Basically, um, if you stand up and start running, they will get you straight away, but crouching and running makes no difference. So, when you grab the key, head for the exit sign again, but now, they're gonna be like... <laughs> or whatever noise mannequins make. That's what it'd be like if they were in a Pokemon game. Head immediately, keep going straight there. The camera angle's a bit weird. Head for this exit door and then immediately go into your inventory. Click the key by pressing the A button, B to back out, and then right trigger to enter. Yeah, the way that inventory works is... It, it's a bloody weird one, that one. But uh, you'll get used to it because you guys and gals are goddamn fantastic. Heading all the way down anyway. If you want a cheeky snack, you can go nuts. Cheeky beer or something right there. I just head through. And we're going to just keep heading straight for now, of course. Nothing creepy is happening. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Uh, just head to the right anyway. That was the worst noise if I wanted to scare anyone anyway. Sounded a lot more like a crap myself, literally. And it's not this one, but during the next right, just past this curtain, we're going to be getting our first missile ball and only collectible of this achievement uh, Achievement in this chapter. Head through the bloody handprint with all the footprints on the door and there is a audio tape. Press the right trigger to interact with it and that is what will get you the psychological evaluation achievement for Raken's psychological evaluation tape. That's mad. Anyway, from there we can head down and to the right... All the spooky bits cracking on, pass uh, and into the admissions office on the left, and we're going to be picking up another key. That, like I said, is the only collectible of this chapter, so don't worry, you will have that. Life will be grand. Head to the left from here, and we're going to have to just keep on running. So, Raken, um, not sure if he's after us at this point, but we're just heading straight for the double doors, and we're just going to get out. 
Now, what normal people would do right now is go, you know what, screw this, I've shit my pants enough for one night, I'm just going to go home and pretend like this never happened, but, of course, we don't do that in games, nah. So, we're just heading basically straight now for the next set of Double Doors, which is just literally the opposite side. And why don't people do that in horror games? Why do, what do you think? Oh, I've got to explore this mental asylum building. Anyway, Ronald Reagan's going to chase us here, so we need to go immediately to the right. Reagan is chasing us this time. So, don't stop to take a look. Again, he's a bit of a crip now, so, um, he's, he's, he's on crutches, so, you've got a bit of speed over him, luckily. Right, for this bit, we're going to head, basically, it's, it's still more or less straight, just in between these two carts, and to the door again, so inventory, get the key out. I almost balls that one up, actually, because I wasn't looking straight at the door. There we go. Whap the key out, job done. And Ronald Reagan is nowhere to be seen. The morning after pill, man. Do 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 do. Trying to make this a happy game, even though you might have shit your pants by now. Anyway, so we're good to go now. We can start just. <laughs> we can start by heading down the stairs. By the way, this game auto saves a lot as we pick up the torch. Um, yeah, so this game is a good one for auto saving, but you can manually save in certain parts as well if you so prefer. So heading to the left and down to the right, just. Before the last door, open it up by pulling it, pulling it open, and to the left you can see another key, the control room key. Lots of mismanagement. Oi! Don't you throw your lockers at me, you son of a bitch! Into the last door, we're gonna head through the pipes now. Yeah, these cheeky ghosts. What you trying to do, man? You tried to crush me? I haven't done anything to you yet. Anyway, as we head down, we can go immediately to the left, just behind this curtain. And through the next uh, set of double doors, which is the control room. Daro Shiblaz. Right, and to the right then. Past this door, and we're going to go through the next set of double A doors. And basically, if we just head round the corner, it's basically, this is uh, kind of a linear path, this one. And just press the big red button. Seems to have powered off something. No, 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 you want to power on stuff so you don't get mauled and... Scared and frightened. But again, that's not the video way. Little jump scare there. Ha! Ah, did actually crap my pants, but I'm glad I was talking then. Because I actually um, give a little girly jump. From here, we're going to go to the left. And we're going to see a yet another set of double doors. But we go into the ones in the left rather than the ones directly in front of us. And immediately go to the right. Open that one up by pulling it open. Again, right trigger and of course left stick up or down. And just keep following the path around until we get to the very last door. Hiya! Oh, people doing their washing. Oh, never mind. Oh, I can smell somebody. Somebody actually has crapped their pants in this one. That's that's disgusting. Anyway, go to the only work and want to find an employee's magnetic card. Again, a lot of mismanaged stuff in this game. Lots of keys and magnetic cards and IDs just thrown about. Not a very good mental asylum, this one. You, No wonder you guys got sacked. Right, from here, we can just head straight down. And we are going all the way down. Basically, we are coming up to another... We're coming up to an elevator section now. So, Reagan will appear. We need to use the employee's magnetic card. So, again, press select, get your inventory out. Use it with the A button, press B to get out. As soon as we drag this first... Uh, gorgeous looking... I mean, he's got a hell of a package for a dead guy. Uh, but we need to run... Straight away, because Reagan will appear. As soon as you pull that first dead body out, he will appear. You can't see him because I've gone too far, but basically he comes, takes a little look, and then he goes, oh, okay, never mind. But basically, if we just do one full circle, like I'm doing here, he'll disappear, and you can just leave us on our own. Remember, of course, pressing the left bumper, right bumper turns the torch on and off. And there we go. So now we can just pull the rest of the dead bodies off. Again, you know, <laughs> to be fair, man, they have got incredible packages. What's more embarrassing and disgusting, though, is they've got better packages than me, and they're dead as hell. They just... I'm, I'm quite ashamed of myself. Nothing a little enlargener could... Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm getting a bit off track here. We're pulling all the dead bodies off. Stop looking at the wieners, because... Well, well if, um, unless that's what you're into, of course. Dead guy wiener, that's completely up to you. Anyway, as impressive as their packages are, we can now just head onto the elevator and go up. Now, this section 
Um, basically, these mannequins are going to be alive no matter what, and they're going to, they are going to try and get us. But hopefully, if you follow the same path I do, you can avoid those enemies. Um, otherwise, basically, there's a whole bunch of doors that you can go in, in and be quite slow. But, we need to crouch first. First of all, so of course these ones don't get us. But, um, for the area that we're coming up to, there are a bunch of... Uh, doors that you can sort of lead them around and go through to the other side so hopefully just flying down this path will be good and you can avoid the enemy so we're going to take a right here we're going to take a left here and they're already going to start coming after me so as we go down you're going to see one of them start running so we can easily avoid them go to the right right here all the way to the end and then if we take a left we can see all the exit signs, so we just need to go straight through that door. Now, there may be an enemy, like I said, there may be an enemy in there, but what you can do is lead them into one of the abandoned rooms, run around them, and come back this way. But I'm hoping for you that um, it was just as easy as that. We just take a right all the way to the end and take a left, and that is done. So, to get through this bit then, uh, you just need to interact with both doors and then look at the mirror for a little while until you see this little eyeball on the screen. Yeah, it looks like some tissue stuff. Except it's not. So we can have a look at the... It's basically a little cutscene. We're going to get a little jump scare as we always do. Welcome back to the safety of our house, except, oh, look at that. There's weird tree vines growing through it. So we're not quite there yet. Right, so we need to head to the left. Uh, we're basically just following the vine right now because, again, that's what you always do, isn't it? In uh, v video horror games, you always follow the thing that's going to kill you the most. Congratulations, you're dead now. Now, again, this is the basement area. We'll become a lot more familiar to you later on. Um, so, again, we're going to be heading up the stairs. But Raken is going to be there, so as soon as the cutscene ends and we can turn around, what we need to do is go through the banister. There's a hole in the banister on the left. That is exactly where we need to go. So immediately turn around and just uh, hit the right trigger. Try and, for some reason, it wasn't working for a little bit. But there we go. So as we jump down, don't actually go straight here. I was just going straight towards the stairs again. Go um, back and into the sort of main living room area. So, Reagan does kind of chill out now. He was only after us upstairs, but to the left, you can see this little eyeball painting again. So, we need to grab that one. I don't believe Reagan was downstairs, or he wasn't for me um, anyway. So, I think you should be okay. As we head to the stairs, we can actually go back up there now. Which I was a bit hesitant, but uh, no, apparently we're all good. Head to the right and into the parents' bedroom. Interact with the next eyeball painting. Delishimundo, the nice squelchy. It's like, oh, being... Getting a screwdriver right in there. Really itching your eyeball really good. Ish. Head into the bathroom straight away. We're going to have to pull the curtain. So right trigger and left to pull it away. And interact with that one. Job done. Oh, it's got like the little rat squeal as well. Ugh, extra. Anyway, head to the right and we're going into what would be the, uh, the son's bedroom. But we're just going to interact with his wheelchair. And we're going to have another sort of minute or two of reprieve. <sighs> It's so nice. Actually, it's not nice. Can't tell if we are still in mental home or if we're being probed by aliens or if it's just those, uh, you know, middle-aged men who said they could bench 120 in high school, you know, those uh, particular dudes. Uh, look like we're getting probed, which, well, you know, again, if there's a niche up there, you can't, you can't complain about it. 
depends how far they go really but anyway again getting off track we are <laughs> getting out of bed again and once more we are heading right out of the exit door and heading to the right again and we're going to head to the left and when we get to the end we're going to be heading to the left again and we're going to have a little friend who is not our enemy yet uh, I think his name is Lewis Squidward Tentacles the Inky Man Lewis the Ink Man. So he basically points us in the right direction. Uh, but I'm going to call him Lewis Squidward because, you know, <laughs> why? Why I don't know. Why the hell not? Because, eh, I can. Heading all the way down to the psychiatric ward. <laughs> because, again, why not? You want to shit your pants, don't you? Head to the left. Yeah, that's fine. Heading to the left. Ignore the scream. Jesus Christ, the scream. Head to the right. <laughs> And head to the right again. And straight through to this door. Oh my god. Right, we need to click the button, which is number five, to get that door open. I completely forgot about that scream. Yeah. Head down to the right, and here is room five for this little cutscene. I'd totally lose it as well if you were shoving shit in places they're not supposed to shove. And jabbing me in the throat with a crutch. So, when all is said and done, the cutscene ends, we can open the door, and we can just pick up the key. Again, a lot of keys um, just being left around. Anyway, head to the right, to the left, back into this same corridor, slightly right, then left again, and we can enter through the observation door this time. Remember, you've got to be looking at the door to be able to use a key. Head through and pick up the torch and get ready for yet another cutscene. And watch um, Ronald Reagan. Get interviewed about where his morning after pills went, and he gets angry when he gets asked it. I didn't take him, goddammit! Help. We are left with no choice but to isolate you from the patients and employees in the psychiatric ward. You can sort of measure. No! No treatments! You all are the reason why this. Oh, it's a lonely old life in the mental blocks. Now we can head out of here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So, as soon as you start heading out, yeah, that's the way, right? Obviously, the lights go off, it's all spooky, big, big bits of blood on the wall. But now we can simply just follow the bloody footprints, which, of course, again, is exactly what you do in any circumstance, right? <laughs> uh, keep heading through, into the bathroom, and then on the last stall, and, ah, oh, just in case you weren't sick enough, we've now got to stick our hand in... God knows what that... God only knows what that could be described as. That is just pure bloody diarrhea up kind of intestinal something's failed in someone's body and it's all popped out of him on the toilet but hey at least we get a handle out of it right yeah so there we go then that is tidy bob buff pants takes a while for it to realize that you've actually just picked it up probably because you've got a whole load of crap in your hands as well but then head to the right Open up the door. Don't worry, nothing spooky going on. It's just all still all mental darkness. And head to the left. And then just go through the only open door. Head to the sort of back of the room. And then as we get out, the little cutscene's going to play. Um, if you don't go far enough into the room, this cutscene won't play. So, you know, go back in to the back of the room so the cutscene can play. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got on that one. <laughs> So yeah, unlucky, we get stabbed, choke. Are we dead? Well, not particularly. Somehow. Moaning. Oh yeah. That's all anyone knows. The TikTok generation of today, that's the only moan they know, is the Hi oh, yeah. Which is funny, but god damn I hate TikTok. It's it's so crap. Anyway, head behind you. You can't actually go through the hole in the wall until you pick up the torch, which is on the floor. Very nice of him to stab us and leave us a torch. And then the best way, uh, best way I can describe how to do this, just keep looking at the floor and just keep heading. It's, it's mainly a bunch of lefts, a couple of rights, but keep looking at the floor for the way to go until we pop in out. Like Jim Carrey popping out of the rhino. Right, have a look. Go and take a look at the TV. And again, another cutscene will play. Sadly, this is not the time to be watching TV.
Right then, so now shit is about to get spooky. Ronald Reagan appears. Again, don't worry, he's, um, again, somehow being crippled. But as soon as we can, there's going to be a hole in the fence, as you can see on our left. So as soon as we can move, crouch under, clicking on the left stick, and then go uh, to the left here. We need to go all the way up. We need to go to the right here. I did go the wrong way, so apologies about that one. Uh, but basically, we just need to keep going up. Just behind this curtain, there's going to be a knife on the bed. So pick that up. If the knife isn't there, it'll be behind you on this table here, directly in front of us. Head in through the hole, and then just go straight up to the eye, and give the eye a little stabby stabby of a lifetime. Um, again, you know, if Ronald Reagan does end up catching you, it shouldn't be too bad, because, uh, you know, you'll just start from the beginning anyway. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's slower than those Left 4 Dead zombies, to be honest. No, who's it Left 4 Dead? No, whichever, whichever one has the really crappy slow zombies in it, I can't remember which one. But he is slower than a slow thing on a slow bunch of slow crutches. So, as soon as the eye squirts out all its gunk anyway, we can just simply head through the nerves, the nerve endings and the... Uh, I mean, it's incredibly detailed, really. I wonder if the developers have had some experience with gouging out eyes and taking a look inside. <laughs> Maybe that's what this is all about. Somebody's hiding a secret in Sad Square Studio. Who is it? I'm just joking, of course. Anyway, we've now come to an electric-ish room. We're not too far from the end of Ronald Reagan's chapter now, by the way. So, on the right here, you can see this um, electric box. Luckily, we pulled that out of the poop intestinal failure toilet bowl. So, pop that up, chuck it on, and now we can interact with the door. We can head right through this door. It's another pull door, so remember to pull. And then we can just head back down to the left... And then we're going to be heading right, right, meow, into an elevator. It's a lot of tricky stuff, this going left and right. Very much like NASCAR. Can take a while to get used to, especially when you've turned left your whole life. I'm <laughs> just joking, NASCAR fans. NASCAR's cool. I like NASCAR. So, obviously, more spooky stuff. Ish. I don't know why they put spooky stuff in a, in a horror game anyway. Kind of just be full of rainbows and bubble gums and goddamn puppies. Anyway, to the end, we're heading to the right. Like I said, we are very close to the end now. Cut just a couple of minutes away. Head through this open door. And another cutscene's going to play. Where Reagan's going to get his little boner out. And he's going to bomb the doctor. No! Of course, just, just joking. D don't cancel me. There are just a few technicalities that need to be taken care of, but this will just take a couple days. With everything that happened, I'm sure you'll be very happy to leave this place. Well, I'll, I'll get back to you soon. Well, they must have sedated him pretty good then, because they didn't lose his shit this time. Right, so anyway, once this is done and the invisible wall decides to disappear, there we go. Um, keep pushing the uh, wardrobe, you've got to push it all the way, nice fully all the way. It's incredible that you're doing with this with your head, really, by the looks of things. That is some incredible feats of strength. And as soon as that's done, interact with the hole in the wall. And uh, for some reason, we leave our torch behind, which... You know, it's a bit silly, we could have used that literally for the rest of the game, but there we go! Yes, 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 my friends! This is finally the end of Ronald Reagan's chapter, so if you're not a fan of mental asylum hospitals, well, thankfully, it's over. Uh, so as we head into this room here, this just you're just going to have to sort of walk about a bit, and eventually the door will close, and eventually Ronald Reagan will appear. There he goes. And are you going to crap your pants? I don't know why he's laughing. If we really wanted to, all we have to do is trip him up, and it'll take him ages to get back up, so... You know, why are you scared? I mean, d if you see somebody on crutches, don't obviously trip them up and that. It's not funny, but it's only funny when they're trying to kill you. So, you know, you've always got that advantage. If there's somebody on crutches trying to get you, hurt you, kill you or whatever. Oh, <laughs> he fell anyway. Yeah. So, only trip up only trip up <laughs> someone who's um, broken his leg or something if they're an absolute dick. Or if they're trying to hurt you. Um, anyway, 
just keeps spinning around at this point. It's going to take a little time. I think it's going to take um, breaking to stop screaming for a little bit before the game progresses ever so slightly. Ah, there we go, there we go, there, laddies. So, interact with the uh, door so we can try and get through it. And the eyeball's going to have one more little squirt on us. Ooh. Mm, delicious. Now, that is an actual progress item. So that basically means now that we have ended the first chapter, which is all good, but we can't actually get through the door. In fact, a hole in the floor has just opened up. So if you look behind you on the floor, you're going to see a hole. Um, I accidentally just go through it. <laughs> so there we go. And then that achievement for completing Ronald Reagan's chapter will emerge. Now, there are VHS, there are seven to collect, but we're actually going to leave them so we can collect them all at once. There's one for... Uh, you get one VHS tape for completing each chapter, and then there's another four strolling around the house. But leave that there, we will come to that a little bit later on. Now, we are in the basement, and it's basically very dark around the corner. So, this one, you know, for the first time, obviously we don't need, to, we can't stand in the dark for too long. But the first time you come into this basement, it can be very disorientating and confusing. I've basically just gone straight for the time being, uh, but what I've done... The easiest way I can think of is open up this door, which we just finished, where we found the chapter, uh, the uh, tape. Turn on the lamp, because it will be dark for you, so turn on the lamp right there. And then if we just head in ever so slightly, and turn to the left, you can see some light switches. So turn those two on, and then, <laughs> yeah. So that, I don't know if that'll happen every time when it gets dark and everything. I was just getting spooked out, to be honest, because I thought something was trying to uh, get inside me, and not in the good way. So anyway, bang the lights back on, bang the TV on. Now, I'm going to have a look at the drawers on the shelf right here. There's basically a little alien. Now, he is randomly generated as hell. As you can see, that tiny little alien by the uh, photo, uh, by all the photos and everything, he can appear in four locations in the house. It's completely random, um, but what you can do, basically, you can get one in the first living room, the second living room, the basement here, or, or in the garage. Um, so if you don't get it throughout the entire game, what you can do is actually make a manual save, and then just keep loading that save file until Bernard the Alien spawns at the location that you're at. So if you uh, keep checking all the locations, because we're going to be coming to the basement a few times. So always keep checking, just to see if he's there. Like I said, if not, you can do the whole manual save and reloading trick as well. So don't worry, I just got lucky with that one. Um, but hopefully, you know, you'll get it eventually as well. In fact, you will definitely get it. So just before we pick up the key there, what we are going to do, what we need to do, is just head back down to the garage and pick up the notes. Remember I said at the very beginning of the game, the note that you had to pick up? Basically, um, if you don't pick up this note, a cutscene doesn't happen uh, where we find the garage key a little bit later on. So you need that note on you, so make sure to pick that up before... Well, it, it doesn't matter, you can pick it up whenever you want, but obviously, you know, it just makes it easier to, to do this. So, we are on to Dolores' chapter, so go behind you, and to this door, uh, we're going to open up the, obviously, door with the key that we just got. Um, there is a light switch here that you can turn on, so make sure to pop that one on, if it is off. And interact with the mirror, there is a mirror, basically, Dolores' chapter is, uh, basically, this is just a door, this is just to go to the other side of the garage, by the way. Uh, but Dol Dolores' chapter is only the hardest one uh, because there are a specific set of mirrors that you have to go through. You can't just keep randomly smashing your way through loads. There are specific ones they have to go through. So as we come out, we're going into the living room and we're going to interact with this mirror. Because if you mess up the order, the game uh, just stops progressing or something or other. Um, yeah, so... But, you know, following this guide, honeys, you got it. But we're going to head into the kitchen. Dirty guts don't even wash their dishes. Head into the door on the right, and then, which is the sort of laundry room. God damn you, son of a bitch. Go stop. Stop scaring me, damn it. I'm just a poor man. Anyway, interact with the dryer, washer, whatever it is, on the right-hand side. And now you should get the cutscene as long as you picked up the note from the garage door. Excuse me while I go clean my pants. Ah, 
And there we go then. So, even though the garage key's been there all along, apparently you need a note to tell you that it is actually there. For whatever particular reason. Anyway, as we head back into the living room, we're heading up the stairs. No, no sorry, we're going into the living room first. Make sure to grab the basement key. Again, if there's items that are there that they, they're, they're not actually there, which are supposed to be there, just re just keep making manual saves and then reload it, and then that item should appear. Um, head up the stairs, go to the left, and interact with this third mirror right. Yeah? Again, not spooky at all. Random mirrors popping up. Footsteps from the attic as well. That means you've got to get out of there. Um, head into the parents' bedroom. That is definitely not Hugo, Bart Simpson's twin brother, by the way. It's a lot spookier than that. Um, but I'm only popping in here to grab a couple more pills. I mean, realistically, you only need two, and there'll, there will always be pills that um, respawn anyway. So if you're out of pills, just keep coming up to the parents' bedroom and stock yourself up. There will always be respawned pills, which... Um, I mean, to me, that sounds like the parents have got a bit of a problem, but there we go. Anyway, we're going to head downstairs, and this guy is called George. He's a happy-go-lucky fellow. He, um, well, we'll see what happened to George a little bit later on. But we're just going to head through. This is the second living room. By the way, the Bernard the Alien can spawn on the left-hand side. Big chest to draw things as well. But heading up... Past the phone, and through to the left here, this is the progress room. So every time that you um, finish a chapter, or collect items from doing the VHS tapes and everything, uh, this is basically where they end up, so you can just pop here whenever you want, really. But we're not here for a sit-down or a vacation, we're going to grab this crowbar, or whatever the hell it is, iron tingamajigger, out of the eyeball of old man, and... I mean, well, that is supposed to be Dolores, but that looks more like, uh, you know, my nan on AIDS or something. Um, anyway, so <laughs> so we've got the, um, oh, the reaching hook. Yes, not a crowbar. Far reaching hook. Of course. How could you mistake the two? You silly beastie. Anyway, again, just ignore the phone for now. We'll come back to that a lot, lot later in the game. But what we are going to do is basically head upstairs. So again, past the garage, past the little Dolores' room, back up the stairs, and then, now again, it's always worth just, if you see a dark room, it's always worth just popping the light on, you know, save yourself a couple of spooks and everything, but um, have a look at the attic and then interact the far-reaching hook with the attic, and that is what will get you, girl, why, they have stupid, nobody has a clock like that anymore. Who chimes like that in the head? No, nobody has a big Ben frigging clock. Anyway, as you go up, sort of head, you can either head to the left or the right, uh, but uh, there will always be this one room on the right with a random rocking chair, which is already rocking. Interact with the rocking chair. You have to interact with it, and this will happen. So now we basically end up in Dolores's, or the, this is the main house, but with what Dolores was in. You know, when Dolores lived here. So pick up the slipper off the floor, pop it with the other slipper, and then take a look at the mirror, turn around, and it'll crack, turn back around, and you'll be like, Hey, my God, man, holy shit. Next, have a look at this audio cassette on <laughs> the chest of drawers or this table, whatever it is right here, and that will get us the first achievement. Basically, there are four audio cassettes that you can find, George's audio cassettes, four of these you can find in the chapter so and you will get an achievement for finding all four as well again timestamps in the comment section below if you um if this is all you're after or whatever i've got you covered baby right if you want to take a pill uh, you can but what we can do is head here and then you actually have to turn around because dolores is spookily trying to get in you and if we stand just about here not too much to the left, not too much to the right, basically just where this big blood spatter is. And that'll avoid you going completely insane for too long. But again, if you want to take a pill, you know, by all means, pill yourself up, get your jaw swinging. Um, <laughs> no, not the time to do that, Dwayne. See? See? Stop turning off the lights. You're making me crap my pants, and I've only got a few left now. And the washing machine doesn't work without it being switched off. Anyway, let's head back downstairs. We're heading to the left once again. Now we are following another blood trail. Again, that's what you always normally do in horror films, isn't it? Because everything is just right with the world. 
We're basically heading back up to the progress room anyway, so follow the what looks like a tree vine. This is basically an umbilical cord. And we can just press the right trigger to jump down. So yeah, this whole section with Dolores is basically about her being pissed off that her baby went somewhere. So she's trying to kill you because she's a bad mother. Okay, great. <laughs> right, head all the way down anyway. As we climb down, don't worry about uh, that looks like Lewis Squidward tentacles. Crouch down and head right here. Here. Yep, yep. And just go straight ahead there. So, bunch of creepy looking mirrors. Hmm, what can possibly go wrong? I don't know. Now, this is the effect of the pill, by the way. We're just off our nut. Um, so, anyway, we can uh, start heading round to the left. Now, as you can see, you've seen a bit of Dolores right there. Um, just keep going. Now, I believe, I'm not sure if you've got to go left, then right, then left. But, basically, I end up going left for a bit, then right for a bit. And then going left, and then we're going to see Dolores, um... Well, she's hung herself in one of the mirrors, which is always fine and dandy. So if you keep going left, um, just go right for a little bit if you still don't see her. And then if you don't see her again, as you can see, <laughs> we'll have to go back to the left. And I'm like, where is this licked Malteser? That's what her hair looked like. You know one of those Maltesers that you... You know, the furry Maltesers that you find behind the settee after, you know, a couple of months or whatever? Yeah, that's what her hair looks like. Kind of like mine, which is embarrassing, really. Um, no, but I'm handsome, of course. Um, lol, joking. So, this year, so we finally found the hanging one. But there is one more that we've got to... That's because people took the piss out of her hair, that was. Sorry. Sorry, doll. Del. So, anyway, we do that. Now we need to start heading back to the right. And there's going to be one more um, sort of picture or whatever. There she is. Dolores sitting down. Now what we need to do is simply head back, turn around, and then just walk straight forward into that mirror before she you shit your goddamn pants off about it. I can honestly say that I let out a little girly squeal, to be honest, the first time that happened. Even though I knew it was going to happen, I still done it. So, yeah, good job. I've only got three pairs of pants left now, so... Uh, and what are we in? Not even an hour in, so, uh, well, looks like I'll be doing an Eric Cartman World of Warcraft episode style, where I'm going to have to get the missus to uh, help me, um, you know, clean up. Anyway, we can head through, <laughs> through the door to the left, and we can actually go through this mirror for the first time. We'll be doing this quite a bit as the, pro as the chapter progresses, um, heading through mirrors and everything. Uh, but for now, we're going to head down to the garage. Very annoying noise. Obviously, we've got the garage room key, so whap it open with the garage room key. Now, this is a very annoying noise. You can actually turn the car off if you wanted. I choose not to because, you know, I'm hardcore. Uh, but whatever you do, interact with the sledgehammer on the right, and whatever you choose, it's going to take a few seconds uh, for you to interact with the old sledge. Tidy Bob Buff Pants. Right, so to use the sledgehammer, we actually need to use both hands. So if you're holding pills and a lighter or whatever, you basically need to put all your items into your inventory to be able to use a sledgehammer. You can pick up a sledgehammer, but you cannot use it until you've got both hands free, which of course, you know, is, is pretty sweet because we've, you know, sledgehammers are goddamn heavy. But what we're going to be doing is heading to the living room first. And we need to actually smash the mirror. So again, hold the right bumper, or left bumper, whichever one. And eventually, there we go. So we're going to smash the mirror, but we're not going to go in 
to these mirrors yet. We're just basically going to go around, smash a few so that we can just um, jump through it later on with no fuss, no muss. So head back down to the garage, but don't actually go down. What we are going to do is give this mirror a little smashy smashy, but again, don't go through it just yet. Why are you turning off the lights? That's just a minor inconvenience for me. And it also makes people poop. <laughs> Which is not good, especially in the, if they're in a public place. Head to the progress room anyway, and don't be a noobus like me. We can actually head through this mirror. And, oh, look at this little tiny baby. Oh, hello. We're actually going to take a bit, a little sphere from it, which, you know, is normal. Again, is that what the inside of a womb looks like? I don't know. If I've, I, I was in a womb once. Can't remember what it looked like, to be honest. Can't remember what I'd done yesterday. Um, anyway, we are heading basically back down to the garage now, so obviously head down, and then we're going to head to the left, we're going to whack open that sphere. Hey, you think you're rich, actually, you know, if a baby come out holding a sphere, you think, am I cool and evil, or am I going to be rich from this? Anyway, again, stop turning off the lights, you absolute, you absolute licked Malteser, you. I've had enough of it. Anyway. Uh, what we're going to do is use the sphere with the um, grip, vice grip. Uh, of course, we'll do this automatically, and then it'll basically give us a strange note with writing on it. Now, where the hell did a baby in a womb get that from? Impre Unless, of course, Dolores shoved it up herself and went, right, there's the womb. Oh, God, that's a bit tricky. Hopefully, the baby can grab onto that. Oh. I, I don't know, probably doesn't work like that, does it? I don't know. Anyway, head back down to the right to where the second living room is. This time we are going straight through the mirror. A couple of things we have to do. So interact with this right-hand side plate. We need to interact with this three times until the guy is looking very angrily like that, with his head's to the left. Interact with the leftmost plate once, and then interact with this right window to open it up. Interact with the left window to open it up, and then head down. Don't worry about the darkness. And now, basically, that strange note with writing on it has three different times. So if you have a look, examine it by pressing the X button in your inventory, and then press the um, right bumper to open it up. You know, exactly like I didn't do just then. And then take a look at it. So you've got three times, from left to right, 6 o'clock, half past 3, and half past 12. So that is exactly what you've got to do. So 6 o'clock, 3.30... And 12.30, so we need to do it in, in exactly that order. And the way to do that is you just interact with the little hands and the big hands until you get to what you need. So 12.30 then for this big clock, 3.30 for this middle clock, and of course 6 o'clock for the left clock. A lot of clock, and you notice it didn't say cock. So, made kind of a hash out of those ones, but, you know, we get there eventually. Now what we need to do then is just keep walking around. So, again, you can get your lighter out if you want, uh, just in case. I think it does get quite dark eventually, but all we need to do is just keep walking around until a new red room appears with a whole bunch of baby monitors. Of course, the mirror's gone, so you're like, oh my god, how the hell am I going to get out of here? But just keep walking around <laughs> until the room appears. Don't be scared. Boo! Blah, blah, blah. Blah. Yeah, anyway. Ah, the ever-innocent cry of you losing your mind while a baby screams and cries and it doesn't annoy you. <laughs> Red? <laughs> Red? Ah, so here we go then. It finally appears. Now what we need to do then is we need to b have both our hands free. So pop your lighter in and then drop the sledgehammer roughly around where I am in the middle of the carpet just next to the crib. Um, 
Because basically, if you do it too far away from the crib, it'll actually go into your storage, which is in the basement. Um, and we need it, you know, it just saves a little bit of time. Not having to trace, tr uh, you know, walk back. I don't know what I was trying to say then. Walk back to the basement just to get your sledgehammer. Anyway, a lot of baby monitors. Somebody's got some money, haven't they? <laughs> Bloody hell. Or somebody's on the rob. Doesn't want to rob money, we just rob baby monitors. Because why not? Anyway... So, we've got the baby monitor, uh, now we can just head back out of the mirror, so we are done with this particular creepy-ass baby section, or whatever that's supposed to be. Um, I do end up just dropping one of the pills here, um, just to put the baby monitor in. We don't, you don't particularly need three pills, unless you're that paranoid, of course, or unless you're going that insane. Uh, you know, even one pill should be fine, but I always keep two, at least two, just to be on the safe side. So if you do need to drop one, remember, you press the B button, and then whatever button that it is you want to drop, the left trigger or the right trigger. For me, it was the right trigger with the pills. So anyway, moving on, moving forward, we go into the right. Screw the garage, unless you want to turn the car off, because it's annoying. Heading up the stairs, and then to the left... And left, just by this clock, we need to smash this mirror and walk in. But basically, we need to be quick. Dolores is coming after us here, so we need to run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm a ginger man. But we need to smash this hole in the floor five times. So make sure to crouch and then just smash this. Just keep going as quick as you can. You know, you think you'd be doing it a lot quicker. Um, I thought it was three times, but I think it's five times that you got to smash it. And then as soon as it's smashed, you head down. And the Licked Malteser Dolores will, uh, well, she won't come after us. Ah uh -huh. Up yours, buddy! Again, somebody wants to kill us and destroy us because she lost a baby. Oh, stupid! Of course, there's a lot more to it than that, but, you know, that's... It's just for jokes. Just for jokes' sake. So, as soon as we, um, stop being a fanny, that we just landed on some hard wood and everything, we can now move on. Now, this bit could seem like it would be incredibly spooky and, you know, a lot of shit's going to go down. But it's not bad. We're just heading to the door on the left, just completely ignoring all the dead bodies, as you would so do, of course. <laughs> and here we are then. A uh, couple of things to do here. Uh, this is basically just another little puzzle room, but what we need to do is pick up this little lever. Or the mechanical crank, sorry. If you head directly to the back of it, there is... We need to... Put the, the one mechanical crank in here, head to the right, and then put the next mechanical crank in here. And then if we turn around a full 360, head past here, stick him with the left hand side, and there's going to be just one in the light that you can see there. So again, stick your crank in the hole, and give it the twirl. Deliciousness. Right, so we're all good for now, we don't have to do anything, this is an automatic bit. Uh, so now we can just head back down the stairs. Basically what we've done is just opened up a trap door Not even for the licked Malteser Dolores. It's just for ourselves. And so that's exactly where we're gonna go. So give me Oh, it's not actually that bad uh, Crouch down. We're just gonna crouch through all the beams for a minute until we get to the side And there we are then, back in the house, as soon as we come through the door, back in the house, lovely jubbly. So head to the left, smash this mirror, but again, do not go through it. Give it the smash, we'll come back to that later on. And what we're going to do is head, we are going to head upstairs, we're just going to have a look in this little uh, closet right here. There is another mirror that we can actually smash and walk straight through. Have a look at the hole in the wall. Again, I'm not sure if Dolores was actually chasing us at that point. I, I don't think she was. But, um, you know, never too hard to just have a little check and flip the middle finger. Like, hey, hey, you can't see me. Douchebag. Anyway, keep moving all the way. We're basically coming up to an Easter egg slash very missable achievement. Easily missed achievement, actually. Um, so, you can pick up this lighter if you want, if you need it. But we need two hands to grab this cross. So we need to grab this cross... This bit may be extremely finicky. Um, extremely finicky. Um, so we need to drop the sledgehammer. Don't worry about dropping the sledgehammer because when we come back, the basement will already be in the basement so we can pick that up immediately. We need two hands to grab this 
tri uh, this um, cross. Now, hopefully for you, you'll be able to move it, or it'll be in a lot better position than I was, uh, <laughs> than it was for me. Uh, chuck out your lighter anyway, just so we can see where we go. We need you needed to drop down the hole, and now we can just keep heading through here. Again, make sure that the cross is with you because we do need it. But it's being a pain in the ass. Obviously, uh, Jesus not happy being depicted in this particular game, so he's like, "Nah, screw you, buddy. You are my cross. You're gonna have to fight it." Okay, so thanks very much. Anyway, we can stand up now. Um, <laughs> Drop, I accidentally dropped the lighter and the cross, but of course what we need to do is grab the cross with us. Again, this bit is just extremely finicky. You know, not a pain in the ass at all, really, is it? Um, so anyway, we need to sort of, you know, try and put it up as much as you can. Um, or do I just get up here? I either climb up or... No, there we go. There we go, I'll get there eventually. Jeez, Jesus Christ, it's a lot of hard work for an achievement. But I can tell we've all done harder ones. Especially those on Jitalon games and everything. Those are tough completions. You know, when you um, take a look at the game and it unlocks a thousand G view straight away. Right, anyway, when you fi <laughs> finally get everything, you've got the cross, you've got your light there. Then we can just keep heading up the stairs and we're going to enter into this new room. Uh, what we need to do is just stand right here, drop the... Um, the cross, we don't need that for just a second, but we do need to put this mechanical crank in. And then what that'll do is pop up this little Jesus statue ting. How delightful! I like dominoes. Anyway, pick up the cross, go all the way to where the Jesus statue was, and head into this room with a hole in it. Now you can just literally um, walk straight in front of it, and it will automatically pop it down like that for us. Go back to Jesus statue. He's looking a bit locked up there. He looks a bit sad actually. Uh, poor Jesus. F um, grab the bloody knife off him anyway. Uh, because we're going to need that uh, for a little later on. Head through, head through the door and pick up the shotgun for an achievement. And enjoy the scenery. Now, I wonder what that Easter egg could be. <laughs> if you don't know, of course, it's pretty obvious that it is from the Fantastic Doom series. So, Doom, awesomely Doom. Sadly, we can't use a shotgun like Doom Guy. But what we can do is head down the hole now. So we can just end up basically at the beginning of this section. Doom Guy. Anyway, we, now we can head back through the hole in the wall. Doom Guy style. I assume that's what Doom Guy would just sound like. Because you know he's hardcore go to hell and stuff. You wouldn't have him talking like this, would you? Without a ball sack to his name. Right, anyway. What we can do, we can uh, pop the lighter... Uh, well, you can pop the lighter in if you want, but it makes no difference because we are just heading through the hole in the wall, go immediately to the left into the storage room, and this is where any dropped items that you have, which would be the baby monitor, crowbar, sledgehammer, anything like that, this is where they all appear. So, this, yeah, just in case you need that in the future. So, pick up the sledgehammer again. What we're going to do is... Well, you can place a cannon there if you want, but we don't have any. Turn on all the lights. Like I said, if there's any, any time there's a dark room, just make sure to try and switch a light on. Smash this mirror, but we're not going to go through that one just yet. We're actually going to head down to this little mannequin area. Why you'd have a mannequin area anyway, that's creepy enough in itself. Head to the back, smash the mirror, and walk on through. So Dolores is here, but what we're going to do, she's going to have a little chat. Turn around, have a look at this table right here, or the, whatever, and pick up an, at the second George audio cassette. And pick up this key off the table. Otherwise, we can just try and smash Dolores' head in. Blah! Hmm. Doesn't seem to work. Blah! Screw you and your tea! It's beer! So for some reason then, have that in your head. 
Oh, that looked like it would have hurt. So anyway, while she talks, we try hammering her. For some reason, it just doesn't work. Hmm. Shame. That would have made the game... <laughs> that would have made the game go by a lot quicker. Anyway, when she stops talking and yammering... Hey, don't tell me. See, see, see me, Dwayne. That, that's creepy. You've been stalking my Tinder profile, bitch. Anyway, head back out into this dark room. Kind of like a second toilet or whatever. But there is a light in here, so, you know, pop that on if you can find your way. Ah, just head through to the hole in the floor. Who stole my toilet, damn it? I needed to take a goddamn crap and someone stole the toilet. But why? Well, since we have to hold on to our dookie at the minute, we can just simply head back down. Here we are, back in the main house, Dolores style, Maltesers edition. But we can just head straight through the mirror. Uh, what we're going to do is basically now head back upstairs. And we are going into the office room. So, take a right. It's a nice house, actually, apart from all the death and ghostly stuff and everything. Head to the right slightly, and then head to the left here. We can now open up this office door. If there is no light on, make sure to pop that on. Now, this is important. We need to find an electric key, basically for Lucy's chapter. Um, because at the start of chapter 3, all the lights will go off, and we need to get into the electric room. But we need to get the electric room key, which is right there, so make sure here to pick that up. That will be important, so you're not being hounded by Lucy all the time. Head through to the mirror, and ah, oh, here we see George then, so George had a bit of an unfortunate end. We need to pick up this bag, this infusion bag. Again, very important, make sure to be picking that up. And also make sure to be manually saving regularly as well, just in case. But make sure to pick up that infusion bag. Then with the bloody knife, we can stick that right in George. Sorry, George. I know you're... I mean, you're already pretty fucked. So you're not gonna... You're not gonna feel this one, I don't suppose. I don't hope, anyway. <laughs> Blah! Ah, <laughs> see? Nah, nah, he's pretty dead. He doesn't, um... He doesn't awaken just yet. But anyway, he will drop a key. For some reason, the only way to get that key was to, you know, really stab him, you know, just to take the piss. The only way, we couldn't just take it out of his hands, we had to stab him again. Head to the left to this uh, bookshelf and just interact with it. It's going to open up and reveal da, 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 a secret door. Which, of course, we can now use with the key that we just found from George's dead, rotting, disgusting corpse. There we go, so use the key, enter the door, and there's going to be a little box for us on the left we can interact with. Open it up, and we're going to get a cloud toy, and make sure to pick up the third out of four audio cassettes as well. So make sure to pick up both those items, and there we go. Now, what we need to do, George is going to be standing up. As soon as you walk towards him, and he starts walking towards you, just head back and stand at this sort of back room, this area. It's going to take about 10, 20 seconds, but as soon as the music, the tense music stops... That's when you know he has gone. There we go then. So, tidy bob, buff pants as per usual. So, I mean, he's pretty pissed off to be honest. We did give him the extra stab in. Sorry, George. You know, we could have literally just taken the key out of your hand. But, you know, if you always wanted to stab a dead body, then, well, I guess that was the time. Anyway, from here, what we could do now, we're going to head back up into the attic. So, you should still have your far-reaching hook on you. Um, if you don't, that will potentially, I think, be another item that will just end up back in the storage. Uh, but you should have it on you anyway. Uh, we are actually going to get another missable achievement here. So what we're going to do is head um, to the right slightly. But instead of going into the right room, we're going into this middle where this big glass cabinet is. You see that smiley face sticker? Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and pick that boy up. Uh, but you can't actually smash the glass. You just have to go all the way around. There we go. Pick up the smiley face sticker. Press the right trigger again to stick it in your inventory or whatever, and you'll get the smile exclamation mark achievement. Head into the room then with the rocking chair. Use the uh, Dolores's tea key to get her special tea. Why are you hiding special tea? Actually, we all know why there's special tea in the attic. So the police can't find it, right, Dolores? <laughs> Red. <laughs> Red. 
Okay, Red, what we need to do now is whack open the baby monitor and press the right bumper to use it. We need to turn that one on um, because she's going to start cackling through the baby monitor. 50373. Three. Head left into the bathroom, and there's going to be another mirror. Sh shit, she is creepy. I already smashed this one. I messed up, so I did smash that mirror before heading in, but you can head in straight away. That is fine. Head in through the next door, and basically, just before we start doing this, George's fourth audio cassette is just on the little table by the monitor. She actually creeps me out. That's why I don't like more teasers anymore. Uh, but here's George's fourth audio cassette. You should now unlock the achievement, George's Memento Master, for getting all four audio cassettes. So basically, we need to head through the left hallway, right here first. The next, we need to be going to the right. So basically, her, what she's saying is basically the times on the wall, on the clocks. 5073, etc. So head straight now. And then, of course, we need to look for 5 again, which, again, is going to be the left one. 5. Uh, sorry, the left one, yep. Yeah. And then the last one is 3, so go straight. So that's all that was then. She's basically telling you a code with all the times on the wall. And we will end up at this door, so head straight through it. Nothing sinister happening on the other side. Apart from the... Extremely creepy crying baby. Now we can interact with this record player right here. And she has a bit of a period fit. <laughs> well, sorry, Maltese ahead. <laughs> well. So what's going to happen is then uh, we're going to wake up in this room. Or whatever the freaking hell. I don't know where the fludge we are right now. But my guess is none of this tastes good. And it can't smell that good either. Uh, right, so we, as soon as we can start going, we can now interact with the door, head straight through. Now then just head to the right. You can hear the car, which is kind of weird as well, right? <laughs> head all the way down, and we're just going to head straight through this door. Kind of a linear path, this one. I mean, if you want to take a taste test, see what a womb and a, everything looks like, then, you know, be my guest. Are we going to... Well, I did try having a look. Try to see if we could smash any squidgy stuff, but apparently not. Head through to the next door, then, in what is supposed to be the kitchen. Head to the left, and then down some stairs, go to the right. Sometimes it can be quite tricky to see. And head through this next door. There we go. We're going to head... Uh, it's basically to the left, sorry, where I was. Into this is a familiar looking area right into the basement Again creepy ass baby crying That's why babies are no good for you if they cry like this uh, And then just interact with this record player right here. We basically have now have the phonograph handle um, The camera's gonna get a bit weird because it's gonna basically keep uh, it's gonna try and make us keep looking at it But we're just gonna interact with the door and get out of there Interact with this right-hand side. In fact, no, sorry, we don't even have to. We can just head straight and go through into the basement. Again, take a look if little Bernard the alien is there. If not, you know, don't worry about it. We can come to him a little bit later on. Apologies about that last mix-up. And we are back into the sort of mannequin-style part of the basement. There we go. So now we can head back through into the mirror where the Malteser head was sitting. And now what we can do is just interact with the brown ski. So whip your special tea right inside it, but we need both hands to perform it. So for some reason, well, with the item, with the dynamic items here, I get slightly confused because I don't know what I'm doing. But you can basically just drop a pill. Um, again, if you need some later on, we can just find some in the parents' bedroom. But just drop, drop it for now. Drop everything you've got. What am I doing? I really don't know what I'm doing. Sorry, the inventory system still kind of confused me at this point, even though we're an hour and 20 minutes in. But anyway, when we finally have both hands free, whap your special tea in her. And you think she'd be happy, right? Wrong! I knew it. I'll show you, you damned scoundrel, what bread you're worth.
So she wanted to brew, so we made her a brew, so she whacked us over the head and stuck us in the oven. Okay, right. Never. <laughs> if your land's like that, she's a bit, um, you know, a bit um, critical and insulting. That's the word I was looking for, critical. If she's a bit critical, just know if you go and make her a brew, she's going to whack you over the head and stick you in the oven. So then you have to press the right trigger on yourself to try and get out. So keep spamming the right trigger here. Um, and then eventually we will jump out. I don't know what kind of oven's got a lock on it, though, although I suppose Dolores has probably thought of that. That's why she stuck us in there. Either that or we are just weak piss. So, yeah, if anyone's nan's a bit iffy and a bit, you know, criticises everything you do and everything, just know if you make her a cup of tea, she'll hit you over the head and stick you in the oven. Just just letting you know that, that's all. Um, so pick up the crowbar, make sure to pick up the star toy as well, that's very important. Thanks for the brew. Have a star toy. Have some death and a star toy. Yeah, thanks, Nan. You stupid old bag. Right, now what we can do, don't go right here. We're basically just going to go to the left, sorry. Because we are going to interact with this. Uh, go through this mirror and just head up the ladder. We only need the crowbar basically once in this entire chapter. And that is for this bit. So, I don't know why that is. But it just is the way it is. You can't argue with death game logic. Right, so interact the crowbar with the window. The window does actually start going shut, or start shutting after a few seconds. So as soon as we open up the window, grab the compass, but you need to actually manually drag it towards you. You don't actually physically pick it up. So you need to interact with the window to uh, whap that boy up. Uh, drop the crowbar. I think we have to drop the crowbar. Then crouch, grab the... Um, compass and then start dragging it towards you. I got kind of lucky with that one I'm pretty sure that we can just pick up the crowbar and open up the window again anyway um, Not sure if that was a particular bug or anything, but still it's what we've got. We are now compass free We're gonna stick that one in stick a pill in our hand just in case you know the insanity meter starts creeping up ever so slowly and there you go, as you can see there, so the crowbar, if you just leave an item behind, it does just get stuck straight into storage. So, the ghost's actually doing us a, a favour there, thank you very much. Right, now that we've got the compass then, what we can do is just head to the le uh, to the right back into the, back into the storage room. We, we need the sledgehammer again, which is why we're doing this. Uh, we can just drop the pills. Again, we don't actually need the pills. A lot will respawn anyway. So don't panic your beautiful little buns off about it. Heading back down into the mannequin room and heading to the left. There is going to be a jump scare here. It might not happen for everyone. But for me, well, I'll just take a look. Ah! Did actually shit my knickers at that point, I won't lie. I did poop the bed ever so slightly. So anyway, again, it won't happen for everyone, but if it does happen for you, then uh, yeah, welcome to my uh, shit-stained undies nightmare. Heading all the way up anyway, and we're going to smash this mirror. Pop the lighter away, because of course we need both hands. Give that the smashy smash, and head on through. Now this is a... A section where nobody's after us, no lights are going to go off, but it does look incredibly creepy, as is the huge. Now, what you, you can do is uh, whack your compass out, but, you know, just follow the same path I do. Very easy, uh, linear path, so don't panic again, don't panic your, your little bun seeds off about them. But we're just going to head down the hill until we reach a gate. And here it is. Hello, gate. So, heading through, we've got to basically find this one particular graveyard that we're after. So, from the angel statue here, we're going to just go to the left. And then keep going straight all the way around, past all these uh, lampposts, and there's nobody about. Why is there nobody about? There you go, just keep heading, keep heading around. Taking this very linear path, as it were, and then eventually we're going to come up to a set of stairs that we can go up. Mm -hmm. 
Did I say stairs? I obviously meant solid ground as we go all the way through. Uh, just interact then with this creepy cot with a bunch of leaves in it. And definitely a dead baby in there somewhere. Somebody is sick. Sick! Anyway, we're, we're just... Um, no, there's no dead baby in there. I'm just joking. Um, we're just getting rid of the stones. We're going to be picking up another item. I believe it's another toy. I mean, it's a box, but when we open up the box, we can then get the spaceship toy. It looks more like a spanner than a spaceship, but we'll take it. Right, so now that should be three out of five toys. Basically, we need to find five particular toys to help Dolores chill her ass out. So from where we just were, head to the right, and we're basically going to end up just right by the statue again. But we're going to be front-facing her this time. So from here, we're going to go to the right, up a couple of little steps... And again, just following the linear path. Head up. And again, we're going through the gate of life. The gate of hell. And then we can just interact with the door. And just go straight down. And we're going to end up back in the house and trousen. Now, we're actually not too far away from the end of uh, completing Dolores' chapter. So here we are then, back in the basement. A couple of umbilical cords somebody didn't decide to uh, clean up. It's pretty disgusting. Uh, but we can now put the compass away. Don't need that. So what do I do? Put it in my left hand. Right-o, okay. I'll just drop it instead then. So with that, again, check if Bernard is... Bernard, the little alien, is on the uh, basement drawer thing right there. But anyway, we can head back into the sort of basement toilet and head back down said hole. We're basically following the disgusting umbilical cord right now. But I've heard the umbilical cord tastes like chicken, so not all is lost if you need a little snacky snack on the way. Ah, what a fall. Right, so here we are then, back into the Laura's version of the main house. Head down. You can tell this is an old person's house as well. The wallpaper just screams old person, doesn't it? Um, head through the mirror. We're going into the progress room again. So again, obviously we're following the tasty chicken-infused um, umbilical cord. Head through the mirror once again, and we can see the baby in its cot. Ah, cute little baby. So, pick it up. Now, you think Dolores might start chasing you or something like, Oh my god, my baby. You took my big-headed baby. But we're not. We're going back to the left. And in what is supposed to be the second living room. Ah, oh, that's nice. Nice little bit of light. Get a tan on you, buddy. There we go. Ah, oh, nice. Looking good. Get a tan on those legs and stuff. Heading through the mirror. Going back up the stairs anyway. He's all tan. Look, he's, he's ready to meet his madder. And Dolores then will be here, so we can now actually pass the baby. Again, you would argue this is pretty bad parenting. We've literally just found the baby past the mirror. Dolores could have found it yourself. But, you know, such is life. Guess we'll just do your job for you while you try and chase us and kill you. And we made you a cup of tea as well. Screw your Maltese ahead, Nan. Anyway, she actually uh, does us a solid now because she gives us the moon toy. Or something fell, or whatever happened anyway. But we can now pick up the moon toy from the cross. Leave our um, Malteser-headed licked at Nan. And we can just head back down. There we go. So again, a couple of minutes away now from completing Dolores' chapter. Gonna miss, gonna miss the old Malteser-head me. Anyway, 
bit of gibberish going on again. Don't worry, um, nothing's going to pop out of you. <laughs> pop out of you, I hope nothing's going to pop out of you. Ignore Dolores here, which is going to go straight into the living room. Remember that mirror on the right-hand side here that we smashed earlier? Well, we're now actually going to be heading down it, so... Well, go down the ladder. Now we need to pick up three paintings, particular ones, and put them on the wall. So this middle one on the right-hand side here kind of looks like, um, I don't know, somebody's cave smashed in or something. Pick that one up, and we need to go through this door. Uh, you might have to drop the painting there to open up the door. And then just pick it up. Now what you need to do is just go straight up to it and the painting will be automatically placed on the wall. For some reason I kept pressing the right trigger, I kept taking it off. Head behind you and right at the very end you can see what kind of looks like somebody wearing a mask. This is, um, this is of course basically somebody who's taking COVID a bit too far, covering up their whole face. And then pick up this painting on the floor, again kind of looks like somebody's skull's been caved in. When all three of those paintings have been put on, um, this door will open, and this is where we need to use the infusion bag. So hopefully you will pick that up when I told you to. Put that up with this um, hospital machine of death machine. Or keep you alive for a couple of more months machine, whatever it's called. I forget which one. Pick up the sun toy. There we go. Everyone's happy. So, oh, there's a weird floating can just um, just crushed Dan in the way. Now you can just tell that there's going to be like a deadbeat or something. That all ghostly stuff's happening around, and he's going to be more pissed off that his uh, <laughs> can of last can of beer has just been crushed. My beer, stupid ass ghost! I'll kill you. That's probably what Rico was pissed off about earlier. Actually, somebody crushed his last beer can. <laughs> right. So anyway, we're back in the living room now. What we're going to be doing next is heading up the stairs into the parents' room. And you can see there is a baby cot in there. We're basically in Dolores' old bit now. So what we need to do, again, go into your inventory and we need to just put all five toys on there. So the spaceship, the moon, the cloud, the sun, and the cloud of the star. That's the one. Close Niv. Now that is going to reveal a key for us. Again, you could have probably just unscrewed that yourself if you wanted, but you know, would have been more. It would have been a a, a very easy ten minute Jitalon style game, then, wouldn't it? So, sorry, Jitalon. You know, all all of those Rattalika and all them. I can't, I got to stop bashing Jitalon. They're not all bad, I suppose. They do come in mega handy um, when the true achievements G task comes around. Like it is in November. Anyway, there is going to be a music box on the key, uh, on the floor. So we're going to use the key with that. And we're going to get us a record. Uh, what you can do, if you don't want these audio cassettes in your inventory, you can just pop them all in. You should have four. If there is not four there, then obviously just use the timestamps below to see which one is potentially missing. But you should have all four. And of course, you should have had the achievement by now anyway. So as we head down the stairs, we are going to... More gibberish is going to be appearing. Um, so let's just head around. And we're heading to the garage, but not in the garage. So close the garage door and we can now go into the room or the mirror that we smashed earlier. It's going to start getting all bitch titty and dog kind of crazy up in here. Anyway, give yourself a sprint running forward of life. We're going to start sprinting. We're going to get the Usain Bolt in us now. Uh, oh, well, actually, Usain Bolt could actually run straight. Apparently, I can't, even in video games. Well, that's my career over. Anyway, we're going to head through the door, and then basically we're going to end up back inside the house in Trojan. So, here we are, back in basement land. Now... Again, just have a look on this drawer on the left-hand side, or this chest, or whatever the bloody hell it is, just to see if Bernard the Alien's there. If not, just give the record player a little bashing of life. Pop the crank in first, and then pop the record on later. You have to do it in that order. Sometimes, if you do it in the other 
order, put the record on first, sometimes it uh, glitches out and you actually have to reload your last auto save, which can be slightly inconveniencing. Head through the mirror on the left, just next to the freezer room, and we are going to head through a door where we have to go a specific way. It's just going to be a bunch of music playing. So if we head to the right, and then we're going left up these stairs, basically, um, and then we're heading right down the stairs, sorry. Head to the right here and keep going up. So if you hear the music gets a bit distorted like this, it means you're going the wrong way. Um, I fell, sorry about that. It basically means you're going the wrong way. Um, it, you're going the right way when the music is playing nice and smooth. But following this way for me was the quickest and easiest way. So left here. Up stairs. And then what we can do is just jump down to the right. So there we go. Then what we can do is head up. If you go to any of these other doors, nothing actually happens. There's only one door that we can actually go through. Keep going straight right. Meow. And then we go, we're going to drop off the ledge once again. There we go. So pop it off and then straight in front of us is the door. Again, not sure if the game <laughs> intended us to be able to drop off ledges and do it the cheaty shortcut way. But baby honey, we always find a way. Right. Anything spooky happening right meow? No, not me. Um, all we need to do is just keep walking forward for the time being. And again, somebody got a lot of money to be spending on time-bending infused cots. Now we're going through the butthole of Dolores. That's a lot of, uh, yeah, this is what an actual butthole looks like if you were shrunk down into miniature size. Hmm, doesn't smell the best. But as we get back anyway, let's let's get out of uh, Dolores' butthole. Because we need to now interact with not this one, there is one just to the left, immediate left. We need to interact with this peephole. And, ah, oh, look, Dolores, look how happy she looks. Actually, to me, that looks more of the face of regret, like, Jesus Christ, I'm losing my mind. Notice the Licked Malteser haircut again there? Don't worry, she's not going to kill us or anything. Have a look at the next peephole on the right. And, uh, she's like, ah, oh, right, I, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy that I'm losing my mind. Not all babies are like this, of course. I have... <laughs> I have two myself. They were fan, just fan. Did actually kind of make me end up looking like Dolores, to be fair to him. But, uh, you know, they're bloody good kids anyway. So, we're just going to see what Dolores is up to. And... Hmm. Nothing so far. Everything looks good. Baby having a cry. Maybe she's going to get a bottle or something. Yeah, probably going to feed her. Because I wouldn't want to suck those milky titties dry. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Right, okay, so she hung herself instead of feeding her baby. Right, okay. Right, so that went well then. Apparently not. I do always wonder what, what ever happened to that baby. I'll tell you what happened. That little baby grew up to be President Barack Obama. Give us a hand, Barack. Oh, congratulations. Right, so when we are done with this, we can now head out, pick up the hairbrush, and that is the end of Dolores' chapter. So, who knew? Dolores um, gave birth to President Barack Obama. That's mad as hell. Incredible. So, that is the end of uh, chapter two. We've only got Lucy's chapter to do, and basically there was VHS tapes, and, uh, VHS tapes and a bunch of miscellaneous. By the way, VHS for anyone um, watching from the TikTok generation basically means old videotapes. You'll see what I mean in just a bit. In fact, you'll see one on the floor now. It looks it looks crazy and incredible. Um, but basically, yeah, just having a little, little look in the room. So, this is what I mean now, but the breakers might have tripped in the electric room. This is why we picked up the electric room key earlier, because if you don't have that key... Uh, by the way, you can have a little listen to these if you want, I believe, which is a pretty cool... Uh, which is pretty cool, but if you don't, like I said, if you don't have that electric room key, um, you're going to find it a little bit trickier, because of course we're completely in the dark now. Um, if we just head to the right here, we're going to start the third chapter, which is fine, but if you wanted to go down to the electric room, um, which is 
Um, in the basement, right next to the freezer room, you can do that and put the lights back on. Otherwise, for now, what we're going to do is open up this cupboard. You'll have to open up both doors, by the way. Stupid light. And then what we need to do is interact with this wall three times. You're going to hear two knocks and then one big booming knock. The one big booming knock basically means that Lucy has gone and you are safe to exit. So, here we go then. So, again, this part might not happen for everyone um, as in terms of the lights going off and everything. But it may happen for you. This is why I'm just telling you sort of what to do. So, as we uh, go to the TV... You can walk away, come back, and you can just see Lucy in the freezer room just having a chill right there. That is fine. So now what we're going to do is actually turn the lights back on. So head down, obviously, to the left and then down into the basement. Again, don't panic your, don't panic your pubes off about it just yet. Um, I actually go the wrong way here. Sorry about that. Obviously, what we need to do is go straight. Um, <laughs> when you come down the stairs, of course, just go straight. There we go. To the left, the TV remains on, which is good, gives us a bit of light. Ignore that, just go straight, and this is where the electric room is. So again, hopefully, you have the electric room key. Go right, and then you can interact with the um, power switch, this big breaker generator thing, whatever it is right here. The lights will come on. So again, we're going to need to do that because Lucy will get you in a matter of no time at all. Um, if you keep the lights off, basically your insanity will go nuts and life would be good. So head to the right here and pick up the camera. Very creepily, Lucy is just at the other end of the hallway. So what you need to do is keep taking pictures of her and walk towards her. But when she starts walking towards you, like now that was automatic by the way, but she's going to start walking towards us. So just head in this room. Basically, you just need to wait for a couple of minutes until until she goes. But it's very important, what we need to do here is pick up this light bulb. This is for an achievement later on. So, there is one here, and there is one just in the hallway of the living room as well. So don't panic if it doesn't appear for you here. You can pick up the one um, next to the radio and the lamp, just outside the living room. Um, but if it is here for you, make sure that you pick up the light bulb. Lucy would have gone at this point, um, while I piss around with the light bulb and the inventory and everything. So, one hour and 40 minutes in, and I'm still getting confused by the inventory. It's, uh, not all Welsh people are as dull as me, honestly. So, take a pill again if you want to, um, pop your sanity meter down a bit. Um, uh, but what I would do is, <laughs> there we go, so finally put it in. But yeah, so make sure that the light bulb is in your inventory, and we'll get back to that achievement later on. Turn on the light and head through this door. Again, turn on the light as quick as you can. If you can, it'll be the lamp that'll work this time. And there we go. There you go. That light obviously doesn't work. Now we should be okay. You can pop your lighter back out as well for a little bit of light. By the way, Lucy's chapter is the shortest of the three, which is good. But for me, it personally was the spookiest. So there is the extra light bulb, by the way, that we just were. Um, again, pop the light on. Thank you for turning the light off, Lucy. Use dumbass. And then we can just head back upstairs. So yeah, obviously all of the rooms are going to be dark, so we can just keep on turning, flicking them on, flicking them off. Head into the back into the office right here. Now, although the light doesn't work in here, that's fine. Whack your lights out, go to the back of the room and find spooky ass drawing. You see the save symbol right there? That means the story has progressed and we are good to go again. If you don't have the electric key yet, you haven't picked it up, this is exactly where it is. Just in the left-hand side of the drawer, top drawer. Right, life is good. Now, what is that weird red glow? Shall we try and get out the front door, smash the glass? No, let's go in towards it. Sounds good to me. Actually, what it is, is kind of a reprieve of any being hunted by ghosts and all spooky crap for the next sort of five minutes or so. It's quite nice. But what I should say, now remember the um, psychological evaluation tape? That was the one collectible in the first chapter. The four audio cassette tapes in the second chapter. Now, in this chapter, there are what are called matryashka dolls. I think I'm saying that right. Apologies if I butchered that like I always do in my typical British way. Um, but basically, there are ten to collect throughout the the uh, entire game but there are three missable ones in this chapter 
which means if you end up missing one of these three, you will have to basically replay the game. I, I believe you'll have to replay the game, get back to this point, and um, do them again. So, like I said, there are seven... Uh, yeah, seven which are stowed in the house, which is fine. But there are three missable Matryoshka dolls, which you have to get in this particular chapter. So, the first one, uh, just being a bit of a tourist right here and going, Oh, why, this doesn't look creepy at all. Kind of looks like a graveyard for children, you know, with all teddy bears and stuff. Not sure. hmm. Well, that's sad. Anyway, there's this only tree house, so we're going to interact, we're going to climb up the ladder... And the first Matryoshka doll is right hidden very well. If you crouch, it's right underneath this table. There you go, you can just see it's poking its disgusting black eyes out at us. Press the right trigger on it, and that will be the first out of ten Matryoshka dolls. So, remember we've got three to collect in this chapter, which we have to get. But, go to I Want To Be Your Friend, Lucy. Grab the key from the back of the piece of paper, and stick that in the otherwise... Um, weird looking box. Basically, what we can see with Lucy is the typical, she's a kid, gets possessed by a demon, starts losing her mind. Right, so we can't escape, so it's literally now for the next minute or two, something like that, it's just going to be a lot of dialogue until the uh, screen changes. So you've got a lot of time to collect this Matryoshka doll anyway, but like I said, just get it out of the way first and we've got two left to get in this chapter. It's not what it seems, Lucy. It's a beard. I didn't have to glue pubic hair on it or anything. Hmm. Now, maybe if Lucy had the Shia LaBeouf, just do it, uh, angle that I just gave there, uh, maybe she would have done it with no hassles, but apparently not. So, this part of the game equals no light. So, all the light switches are off the wall, as you can see. Not a light switch to flicker in the house, but it's not too bad. This basically acts as kind of a linear path now. So, as we head upstairs through the living room, we're going to head upstairs... Um, obviously this is meant to be part of the game to make it a little bit more difficult. Have a look, see Lucy playing, all good. And then crap your pants. Uh, again. Man, I've got, I'm down to one pair of pants left and we've still got, well, quite a while to go yet. Anyway, we're heading into the parents' bedroom, all the way to the back in the right-hand side. And this is a closet that links the two rooms. Now that would be awkward, you know, if Lucy grew up and she had a couple of, uh, friends come over, as it were. Um, <laughs> You know, you never know with uh, certain families, maybe they're into that stuff. Bit of stepmother, stepbrother, stepsister thing going on. Anyway, at the back of the room, <laughs> as you can see, we can um, rip the door open and we can head through. So, lighter, it doesn't work, all good. That's potentially fine. Oh, in fact, no, sorry, I just ran out of uh, gas, that's why. Gas and yes, right. So this bit is... I think this is randomly generated where this key is, but basically we need to find one key which can be in a whole bunch of drawers. And I do get quite idiotic here, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. So keep checking just every drawer for now. Um, to be honest, I replayed this bit a couple of times, and the key was always in the same place for me, which is right here. 
but it, it can be in any random generated place for you. So there are a couple of chest of drawers about, like I said, just here, and there'll be some to the right as well. Now, when you're supposed to get that key, um, if we just keep heading down, it's very dark, very hard to see, but if we keep sort of heading down and to the right, there is supposed to be a door which Lucy is actually guarding. Um, but I think there's one bit where Lucy's going to spook us and we automatically turn around. Well, you can turn a lamp on if you want for the tiniest bit of light. Uh, so again, a couple more draws. So apologies about this bit. This, um, yeah, very dark, very hard to see in here. So there she is then. So Lucy, we've seen Lucy. She's just crapped our pants. Now she's basically going to be guarding a door. I thought it was this one, but that is literally just the beginning door again. Um... Now, when you see this door, you can see her shadow sort of moving back and forth. So you're supposed to wait until she goes to the right, and then just make a beeline for the door. But, for me, I end up spooking her quite quickly. There's the door. So I hear the music, my controller starts vibrating, so she's basically coming after me at this point. So if that happens to you, you can actually go to the left here, and make a beeline for the door. But right here, she'll be um, guarding back and forth, left to right. So if, if you see her going um, left and right, uh, wait until she goes to the right and then um, run to the door. So, yeah, apologies about that bit there. That, that bit was uh, dark and very confusing, um, but you should make it with no issues there. There are two, two or three ways to go if she does get you. So you need to keep on heading down, of course, because she was after you. I d don't know why you'd bloody stop, to be honest. So check the doors, the doors will disappear, and then what we have to do is just circle around this birdcage a couple of times. How the first person ever was, uh, whoever played this was the first person ever to ever get this is uh, pretty impressive. But that was, that was what you're supposed to do. Interact with the doors, circle around the birdcage, and Lucy will appear in the corner. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know, maybe she's trying to get something out of her, I don't know. But there she is, kind of looking more like the witch from the Left 4 Dead series right there. Or she's, you know, we're just, take, we're just taking pictures as she um, kills a rat or something. Proper touristy, you know we are, with the camera. Oh, can't wait to get home and show these to the family. Right, so when that is done, we can go through the door. Make sure there is, an, uh, there is a Matryoshka doll right here. So before heading through to the next door, make sure that you have grabbed this Matryoshka doll. That should be number two out of three in this room. And then you can head through. So again, make sure to grab that Matryoshka doll before we go through. Right, so head through. And a bit of darkness. We're going to take pictures of the dark to show our family. Oh, very nice. I'm sure they'd be mighty impressed. Um, head to the wardrobe. Spooky stuff, of course, happening as the huge. Heavy breathing and moaning. Ha! Oh, that's like, uh, you know, me by myself. Anyway, head into the bathroom here. We're going to pick up the mannequin jaw from the sink. Now, I do actually show Lucy is around. So basically, what we're going to see here is the lamp flickering. And Lucy, if the lamp starts flickering, she appears. Okay, so if you see lights flickering and everything, that means that Lucy is near. And basically, just head back in the opposite direction until the lights stop flickering. That is how to get past that. Um, personally, that was the only death for me, anyway, from, you know, any of the chapters. Uh, Dolores and Lucy running around, that was the only one. So, again, not sure if it's just a case of you have to wait a couple of seconds while you're upstairs. Maybe I went down too quick. Maybe you've just got to wait a few seconds and then head down the stairs or whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, so Lucy can appear there for you. Yes. So just just make just be careful. That's all. Just make sure. Otherwise, this time we are pretty golden. Just taking pictures of the random kitchen in the dark, and this time we are good to go. I left that in just to show you anyway, um, just in case. So again, I be very stupid right here. In fact, no, I don't be very stupid because we are going into the mannequin room. Apologies. Yeah, that's where we're off. And then what we need to do is place the mannequin jaw that we got from the sink in the bathroom. Place that on the mannequin. Open up the doors. Take a couple of pictures. Because, you know, we are the epic. We are the tourist of life. 
Lucy appears again, but don't worry, she is not going to slice your genitalia off and put them on some toast this time. Oh no, the compass is now in the storage room. Oh my god, what am I going to do without it? Right, out of the door, head left and go up these stairs. Lucy will be here. I just about catch the top of her head, which again, crap my pants the first time. Head to the right and then head into this door. <laughs> I did generally shit me knickers. I've shit me knickers a lot, actually. I'm going to have to start wearing knickers now, I think, from now on. So anyway, this is a quite nice linear path. You can turn the radio off. It's just an annoying crackle. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but after that, this is kind of um, a, a, an easier linear path now from the Lucy story. We're just going through paths, opening doors, and yeah, living the dream. Thank you, mannequin. Thank you for that spook. Always try to put a spooky mannequin in. So heading up into the nice attic. Could have given this a sweep while we come up here, but uh, apparently not. So I'll just keep heading around for now. Again, there's not a lot going on. You can just keep being a tourist. Uh, but we are actually now at the third point where we're going to get the third Matryoshka doll. So into the middle of this room is this middle wardrobe. Open them up. And then you're going to get a little jump scare. There you go. Take a picture. And then the third Matryoshka doll will appear here. So that should now be good. You should have all three Matryoshka dolls in this section. The rest are in the main house we'll grab later on. So into the back corner, we can now jump down this hole. Again, making sure you've got that Matryoshka doll before moving on. And then we can just interact with the carpet once to reveal a hole. That's a bit crap. Imagine somebody else walking down there, falling straight through. <laughs> well, I suppose that's how kidnappers do it, don't they? Dirty git. Again, very very linear hole. We're just going to be um, popping our way through. Don't, again, don't worry about the spiders. Oh, we've got a little hole that we need to fist. Stick our fist into. What are we going to pull out? This basically, we're basically a doctor right now. Oh, excuse me, doctor. I've got something in my hole that I can't get out. Oh, it was a big metal pipe. Jesus Christ. And then the doctor would ask, how in the hell did you manage to fit that whole metal pipe right inside your rectum? And then there will be a bit of awkward, a bit of laughter... And then a bit of tail between his legs as he never inserts a metal pipe in his rod again. So, when we've taken out metal pipe out of hole, we can now climb up to where we were and we're going to head to the right this time. Again, taking pictures. This is all very touristy of us. But why not? And this bit, a lot of spooks going to happen in just a moment. What we need to do is... Uh, pop our items away because we need to pick up the chair and just move it out of the way. That that to me was just incre incredibly inconvenient. It doesn't do anything, doesn't serve a purpose. It is just extremely inconvenient. So <laughs> open up the cupboard door and then head on through to the other side. And I think uh, we're going to go downstairs rather than go back into spooky room. Head to the door again. And there we go. So, a lot of spooky stuff is going to happen. I don't know. It's not... No, it's not this one. Sorry. We're heading through the slightly ajar door. And then what we're going to do, take a right and then take a the right in the first door. Skip your way through that. Take a couple of pictures again. Head on through. Again, this is just all one basic linear path, more or less, as soon as you know the right doors that you're heading in. Head up the old wooden piers. It's a big house. Jesus Christ, this is a big house. Take some pictures again if you want. You know, the family are going to be so delighted by your ghostly telltale. Head to the through the left door. Uh, a lot of insulation and everything. And, uh, yep, yeah, all cracking on. Heading down the stairs. Heading through this door. And then we're going to interact with the cupboard. Open that up and there's going to be a key. A rusty old key. So, now basically we can just head back the way we came, so straight back up the stairs once more. And when we get out through the door, we're just going straight through the door, which is the door in front of us. How many times does a door got to say door in this dooring playthrough? I adore it! Ah! Funny. Head through to the right into this little room, we need to pink up this plank with the creepy eyes on it. Definitely not plank from uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And just keep going straight. This, again, pretty linear. Nowhere else to go. 
and we can just pop that on the hole again you think he could jump but evidently we can't keep on going straight and like you said there are like i said earlier there are a lot of uh, points where it saves just absolutely lovely this is spooky corridor sorry so just keep going straight into the left for now ignore all the scares and the pooping not literal of course well then again and then we're going to come to this uh, weird stairway we're heading up the left set of stairs though man whose house is this i want it Right, this bit is particularly dark. Basically, you go up the stairs, go to the right, and there is a door that we can enter. I get extremely confused and start looking at the floor and start looking up at the ceiling and all types of crap. So you can only use your uh, flash on the camera to light the way. So as you can see, I'm getting a little bit confused. But that's all it is. Up the stairs, to the right, there is a door. And here we go. I do eventually find it. So better late than never, I suppose, right? Alright then, so there we go, we're going to start heading towards the light, ignoring the disgusting dust. And we're out of that particular area, straight through the door, and we're into... Wow, this is a hoarder's dream, but the one question I want is, how in the hell... Where did you get the car from? Where the friggin' hell have they managed to just go, oh, you know what, I'm going to buy this car. No, I don't need it anymore, just check it in the basement. Did it, did it just turn into a transformer or what? Anyway, you can open the door here, because when you get up on there, it does get, it does get a little bit tricky. Uh, but we can climb up, say goodbye to the car. I don't know how the hell you're supposed to get that out. And we are back in the house in the main basement. Again, have a look at Bernard on the left side right here, if you still haven't got him. Um, otherwise, we can now just whip out your lighter and light the way ever so slightly. Heading back up, I think now we are going to be going up the stairs... I just, all those jumpy noises, <laughs> they make you poop your pants. But we are going upstairs and into the bathroom. So this is basically now, we've got a, a couple of minutes left. This is the end of Lucy's chapter, but we need to open up the curtain. And we need to try and interact with both doors. That is how you get, once again, that's how you get the story to progress. So you need to interact with both doors. And if you see, we can turn the light off. The bath eventually will start running. It, it's on a timer or something. It takes a minute or two. But it, can you see Lucy just through the frosted glass? I'm going to take a picture of that. You can see her hair swaying from front to, um, side to side. But she's not in the bath. It's creepy stuff, man. And, it, well, you can see her visible, beautiful, visible, deathly white glow. Uh, so, yes, you can have a little look around in here. Um, interact with the doors or anything. But the bath should start running on its own. Eventually, take a picture of a window. Oh, how nice. Right, and then, like you said, sometimes the lights will go off. So, it's pretty much, there you go. So, the light, the bath finally starts running. Now, we need to wait until that's full. So, basically, there's not a lot else to do. Again, you're going to have a look, um, see what kind of uh, meds that the old um, house owners had. Bit of toothpaste, nothing, nothing too fantastic. You know, perfume that looked like a... A jammy dodger there, which was weird. Weird shape. Otherwise, there's literally nothing else to do. All you've got to do is just wait by the light, because the light will flicker off by itself. So just try and uh, turn it back on. If it goes off by itself, just turn it back on. And just wait, wait, wait. Sixty-four, 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 zooling. Whatever, something like that. Ah! So here we go. You're trying to interact with it, but it's all good because um, Lucy's just going to scream, cry, laugh like a freaking weirdo, and that basically <laughs> means that the bath is going to be ready. So wrap your lighter on and just keep 
um, spamming the right trigger button until the bath stops, so we can just jump in without having Lucy try and um, slice <laughs> slice our nips off again. There we go. Ah, nice. And again, that's that's what you do, you know, when you're being haunted and hunted by uh, deathly demons. The the first thing you do is think, I'll take a little relaxing, a little relaxation bath when Lucy's standing right in front of me. You kidding? Ah, now come on, who didn't see that coming? <laughs> Although, oh, Lucy, was that you? <laughs> Get out of there, that's... <laughs> hey, that tickles. Oh my god, Lucy, don't drown me! One last, one last pleasurable experience before death. Tidy Bob, buff pants. Right, this is just one of those um, little areas that we just have to go into the light and watch the particular dialogue and the scene playing out. Nothing at all spooky, but we just see why Lucy's dementia... Um, Descent, that's the word. Jesus Christ, my words are not good. We're going to see Lucy's descent into madness as she um, smashed her bird into a million pieces. Oh. She's never done anything like it. We, uh... I think we should see a professional. the diagnostic she could be in danger we don't have much of a choice i know all that but who the hell prescribes syringes for a child couldn't they just give us pills like everyone else how can a child trust a parent that thrusts needles up their arms this new doctor clearly doesn't know anything about parenting I don't want their help anymore. She's only been worsening ever since we went to these doctors. Imaginary friends and all these weird behaviors? She doesn't even call me mom anymore! They're just trying to help. It's not their fault. Even before we sought their help, she had problems. She killed Pico for fuck's sake. <sighs> don't you remember? Woo! 
Okay then. So Lucy wanted to use her jaw on me one last time before she ripped it off. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay. Right. Tricky. Freaky. But thankfully, that is the end of Lucy's chapters. That is the end of all three of the main Scary Boy chapters. Pick up the jaw, because you can, from the sink. And that will be all three chapters complete. So, we do still have quite a bit left to do. But what we are going to be doing first is grabbing all the VHS tapes. Because we've got a couple of collectibles to grab. The rest of the Matryoshka dolls. We've got to collect the seven tapes. The four neighbours pages. We've got to do these seven VHS tapes as well. Which, again, the TikTok generation right now are mightily confused by looking at that. Oh, it just looks like a giant phone. Uh, anyway, as we head out of the toilet, head back into uh, Lucy's bedroom. Uh, in fact, no, sorry, we're not heading into Lucy's bedroom. I think I was just uh, giving myself a moment of... Uh, quite reflection, because, uh, you know, I'm just glad it was all over. We're going to go into the parents' bedroom, sorry, and grab the second videotape, which is negligence. Uh, don't worry about the baby, though, again. Bar he became Barack Obama, so not all was lost there. Now, again, a lot of the lights are going to be off, so always worth just slapping a few of the lights on. We're going to head, um, basically, down to the basement now. Uh, so yeah, we're going to grab all the seven VHS tapes, is what we're going to do. I'm um, getting a bit confused for some reason. We're going to turn on the lamp, and we're going to go st <laughs> straight again. Just whack on all the lights you can, because you still can lose your mind. You can still uh, lo uh, lose your mind, get an insanity, and a ghost still can appear. So that is why we are still having to um, turn on all the lights and everything. But we're going to be picking up the third VHS tape, which is, of course, where we started from Raken's first chapter, the prison one. Right, so that's the three main ones done. We've now got four left to find, and they're all very easily found anyway. So, next place, we are heading to the main area of the basement. And basically, it's going to be in this second drawer, uh, or this... Yeah, second draw, bottom draw down, get the videotape called Addiction. <laughs> I'm a dick, Tid, too. Nothing. Head into this little boiler room, and it's going to be the Greed videotape there on the box, just on the right-hand side. We'll be coming back here a little bit later on. Avoid standing in the dark for too long. Oh, are you sure, game? That was, I thought that was the whole point of this game, was to get mauled every chance we got. Anyway, again, if you still haven't got Bernard the Alien, keep checking... This uh, drawer right here, or this uh, tabletop, whatever. And again, do the same for the living room, the two living rooms, and the garage as well. Anyway, but we can head up the stairs, and directly in front of us, on the top shelf of this little drawer right here, is the Indifference videotape. Head to the um, left. Again, still got the light bulb there, just next to the lamp, if you need it. Uh, whack on the light, of course. There we go, it's a bit safer, isn't it? You know. Right, light is nearly empty, which should be fine. There should still be one, at least in the bathroom. But we are heading into the second living room area to find the final tape. And again, have a check if Bernard the Alien is in here as well. He will be in one of these, uh, on one of these uh, shelf in storage, bookcase unit things, whatever that is. But we do now have all seven VHS videotapes. And we have to basically play. They're kind of like side missions, like I said, whatever you want to call it. Um, which we have to do a bit later on anyway. So, you can do them now, but we're going to do them in just a bit. This is the other place where Bernard the Alien could be for you. So, always keep checking there as well. But this is where the VHS is. So, we're just going to pop all seven in. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is actually do a couple of the miscellaneous achievements. Uh, just to get them ones out of the way before we do these. Because those VHS tapes are going to take up another chunk of the game. Having to do them. They are easy enough. But, um, yeah, so we'll just get some of the miscellaneous ones out of the way first. And so the first thing we're going to be doing is heading up the stairs and going into the office. We're going to be getting the Dance Dance Achievement. So I'm not sure if this was a prerequisite for the key to appear, but I interact with the safe first. Basically says it's locked. Then if we head into the bathroom, the key should now appear in the sink. Now, like I said, again, if it doesn't appear in the sink, try doing a manual save or, you know, reloading a manual save just before, and then hopefully it should appear. Because there have been a lot of times where people have mentioned that um, keys and other items haven't appeared. And I'll show you, it did happen to me once as well. 
So open up the safe, grab the note, and head back down. We go in basically back down to the basement. Now that we've done all the three chapters, don't you feel it? Um, you, it's a lot less scary, it seems, <laughs> now that we've done all the three chapters. Even though, like I said, don't stand in the dark for too long, because you could still lose your marbles and cry and die all at the same time. Right, so head to the left, and left again, basically to where the boiler room is, where the greed videotape is. Here is the room for 302, interact with it, and just enjoy the Easter egg and achievement. <laughs> oh, that is a top Easter egg there. And for anyone that doesn't know, that is the Room 302 from Silent Hill. Um, yeah, Silent Hill 4, sorry, to be to be precise. Silent Hill 4, so that is another top Easter egg. Really, really good. Uh, but anyway, we're going to head upstairs now. We're going into the kitchen. Now, excuse my um, silliness, as it were. Uh, just trying to find a light. But for some reason, finding a light is hard in this kitchen. But it's actually just on the right-hand side, opposite the table here. There we go. Pop that one on. Pop that one on. There we go. So we're all good. Basically, we're going to be making a cheeky hot chocolate. Why not after crapping your pants for three chapters? So the hot chocolate is in the bottom drawer. As you can see, if I can wiggle it around, it says, How to chocolate. And no, not the band from the, not the, 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 the band of the song, I forget which one it is. Anyway, open up the fridge and get this dope cow milk. Now, you know when milk is awesome, when it's dope cow milk, rather than just regular milk, or that almond milk, which is actually quite nice, to be fair. So, now you should have um, hot chocolate and the milk. You can see the tray just in front of us, just next to the microwave. What you need to do is put the cho hot chocolate and the milk on there, then interact with it. Dope. That hot chocolate more look, looks more like hot piss, but there we go. We're each to their own, I suppose, isn't it? You just got too much thro froth. I, that, anyway, we're going to pop that into the microwave, and a little thing is going to happen. all my hot chocolate right we need to go and find the hot chocolate so close the fridge save electricity and everything you know be, be that guy be a good guy even though we're keeping all the lights on is this blackpool illuminati as my parents used to say anyway head up the stairs to the left we're going into the sun's room now and as you're gonna see okay some weird vortex has appeared we're gonna interact with that vortex and this is actually where the hot chocolate comes out of and well, this is where the achievement unlocks. Again, top, top job. Really funny achievement, that. And then when that is done, we're basically still in the boys' room. But if you just turn around... There we go, we were just in front of his wardrobe, so um, for whatever reason, that doesn't work. But the achievement will unlock, may take a little bit of time to unlock, but that is fine. So we're going to head just back into the kitchen to get yet another kitchen-related achievement. So all we got to do for this one 
open up the microwave, grab the mug that is on top of the microwave, pop it in if you can without trashing the joint. You can put as much crap as you want in as well, just to see how it goes. It doesn't really make a difference, but all you do is put the microwave, uh, close the door, sorry, and the special recipe achievement will unlock. Right, remember that light bulb? There's still a light bulb there, as the radio craps my pants up there. Thank you very much for that. So we should have a light bulb already, but again, if not, there is one next to that lamp. All you got to do is head to this broken light, which has been from the beginning of the game. Put it in your inventory, and then just press the left bumper to swap that in, and that will get us the novice electrician achievement. So, nice few that will pop there. Happy days, everyone's happy, yep. You've got a few miscellaneous ones out of the way? Cue! Right. What we're going to start doing now then, we're going to start doing those videotapes. Again, keep checking. If you still haven't got Bernard the Alien, keep checking there. If not, like I said, we can do that whole um, manual save and reload the game trick and just keep going to four, the four locations to get that one. So pick up the first videotape, which is Addiction, and again, use it actually on the VHS tape. And again, kids, kids of these days, that is what a VHS tape, look, That's this is video. It's mad before awesome graphics and everything. So basically, with these VHS tapes, there are certain points in the house that we have to go to to start said thing. So the first one here is up in the parents' bedroom. Again, turn around when you get up the stairs, and there's going to be this big, giant, creepy hole. Um, for the first five videotapes, anyway, it's basically just a case of listening to either a lot of dialogue or doing quite a bit of walking. But there is Lewis, the Squidward Tentacles... Um, ink guy in the final two um, So open up the bed you're gonna see a whole bunch of beer cans right here Now that is commitment to being a complete alcoholic when you sleep with your crushed up beer cans But all we got to do then is sit down and just listen to the masked man Basically these VHS tapes are part of the mirror mask achievements that we need to get So all you got to do then he's gonna talk a lot. Okay, by the way, he's gonna talk your crapping ear off Basically just telling us that we are a piece of shit, when we already know that, but it, it takes for some reason like five minutes to tell us that. So basically every time he says, take a drink, do exactly that. Whenever he says, take a drink, take a sip or whatever, just take a drink. And that is literally it for this first videotape. Really blurry since you woke up, hasn't it? Do you even know your own name, old friend? Dwayne, of course! There's no mystery here, but I can see that you are wondering if this is real after all. I can assure you, although this might not reassure you, that it is very real. In fact, one might say that this is the first time you're facing reality. No, no, don't look at me like that. I'm on your side, Dwayne. We've been friends for so long after all. Who am I? Ah, you've always been like this, haven't you? Always asking the wrong questions. Dwayne, 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 listen to me here. The real question isn't who am I, but who are you? Dwayne? But that is nothing but a name, my friend. I'm not asking about a name, I'm asking about who you are. Now, now, Dwayne, shush, shush, shush a little bit and take a sip. Remember, you and me, we go a long way. I'm on your side. Why don't we take a little sip to our friendship? Cheers. If you want me to help you, I've got to know something. Are you a fucking murderer? No? Well, what could be the reason behind all that drinking and drugging, then? What's up with you? Oh... You've been seeing things, you say? Things, hmm? Things like that? Don't you worry, my friend. Just take a sip, and everything's gonna be back to normal. Go ahead. Drink a little of this wonderful poison. It'll do you real good. I would advise you to take that drink now, my friend. Cheers.
See, ain't that sweet? You know you can always rely on this to get you back on track, don't you? Yeah, you remember the coarse taste that burns and slides down your throat, ominously bringing relief in the dulling of your senses. Come on, take another sip. You know you want it. And another sip. Cheers. Oh, Dwayne, will you fucking tell me who you are? So when we when he finally stops yapping and we drink ourselves into a dark oblivion, you see the first piece of the mirror mask. Now these are needed for the good ending as well. So obviously it's very important that we do these. Hmm, very nice. So really we start. If you haven't known what Dwayne is like so far, these uh, mirror mask VHS video side mission type things, you're gonna get to see Dwayne for the. Complete and utter arse job that he is. But that is the first uh, VHS tape done, so happily days. Right then, but this was a bit of a pain in the ass for me. This is a bit for greed. So I was going to go from uh, 1 to 7, doing greed, etc. But I'm going to be doing, and again, I'll show you why. Uh, so what we do, take the videotape out, of course. Because again, you, you can't just press a button and it... I mean, technically, you can press a button and it comes out, but you had to do it harder back in the day, not just like on your phone, where it goes away with one click of a button, you had to put it away and everything. But we're going to do negligence first. Um, now, this may not, this bug may not happen for you for the greed videotape, but I just want to show you why I'm doing it in this particular order. So have a look at negligence, and then after a while, the video clip shows to something in the house that we have to go to, or somewhere that we have to go to, sorry. There we go. So that obviously is the basement. So that's exactly where we need to go. But I'm telling you exactly why um, we're doing negligence before greed. And the reason is if we head down to the basement right now. Oh, thanks. The cupboards are stored in the storage room. That's good. Right. Right. So head down. Now, with the greed one, you're supposed to go into the boiler room, do something. And in this electric room, right at the back here, there should be that stepladder. And I thought, right, okay, cool. But when I was doing the greed section, that the stepladder kept disappearing. Um, let's just grab the record player for a moment. And then, of course, what we need to do, the record, the vinyl disc, then place that vinyl disc on the record player, the fanaphonogram, gram, grum. Sorry, forgot what it's called. Like an absolute douche nozzle right there. Um, give it a play. And then what we can do is interact now with the wall. That's going to start um, popping down. And then all it is, is like this kind of big shopping trolley car section where all we have to do, again, it's a lot of dialogue, and all we have to do is just grab beers and put them in the trolley. And that's it for this section. And then we have to drink them. Yeah, very, very uh, heavily douche-nozzled is Dwayne at this particular point. But, um, yeah, so sorry, with the greed. Every time I put the greed videotape in, done the thing that I had to do in the boiler room, the stepladder would always disappear. And it took me about an hour, uh, literally about an hour, to figure out a way to get it working again. So I will show you that exact way if you're having the same issues as me with the stepladder. That is why I'm just doing negligence first. So keep getting this, um, well, craft beer, but it kind of looks like that. You know, if you've got a Lidl or Aldi anywhere near you and they've got that, like, you know, you can buy eight cans of genuine piss water for, like, Two, three pounds, two, three dollars, something like that. Yeah, that just reminds me of that. Drinking piss on the cheap, you can't beat it. I suppose you could just do it for free if you just pissed in your own mouth, but uh, we'll leave that for another Bear Grylls time. some 
So when we're back here, we're just going to head into the living room, and all we're going to do is, again, just enjoy the story, but just keep spamming the right trigger as we drink. Drink the pissiest of beer water that you'll ever drink. How do you, how did anyone get drunk off that? But where there's a will, there's a way. But I tell you what, this bit's actually kind of sad, because I just I couldn't imagine doing this, being like this, um, with my daughter right here. It's, it's, it's kind of a sad, emotional bit, this one. Daddy, I want a story. I think it would be great if you told her a bedtime story, Twain. It's been a while. Daddy? Are you just going to ignore her? Always ignoring us, glued to your fucking beers. You don't talk, you don't sleep in the bedroom, you don't get out at all, you just don't care, do you? Why don't you just leave? Oh. Why don't you like that? Talk to me. You used to be so good to us. And this is the end, we're going to start spewing up and coughing up some black stuff, which I tell you what, if you thought spewing up beer, that just does not look healthy. You're spewing up bits of black and a piece of the metal um, uh, mirror mask, so, okay, maybe I'll nip to the doctors. But yeah, that bit, to be honest, that was not, um, yeah, yeah not, 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 not the best bit, just, just because it's kind of a sad situation where you just completely ignore your daughter because you want to get pissed all the time. Bit of a dick move there, Dwayne Bob. Anyway, when we are finished, we can just head back out, and there we go. We can the door will close, but we can head back in. Right. So this is the way. If you're having the same problem as I did with the greed and the whole stepladder thing, we're going to take out the negligence tape. So that is two out of seven done already. So again, it's and it's always worth popping them back in so you don't accidentally put a wrong tape in or anything like that. So before putting the greed tape in, before putting the greed tape in, let's just turn the lights. Thank you for turning them off, you ghost asshole. We're going to head down to the basement and we're going to do the thing that we need to do first. So we got to go to the left here, basically... I'm just going to have a little look in the electric room, actually. So here, as you can see, the stepladder has disappeared. Again, that is a bug. Um, if you haven't interacted with the stepladder before, it should always be there. So what we are going to do is head into the boiler room now. And we're going to do... This is what you'd have to do with the greed videotape as well. Um, just in case you're wondering what the hell I'm doing. Uh, let's turn the light on. It's there somewhere. Ah, eh, screw it. Anyway, interact with the stepladder, and what we're going to do is actually pull off this vent. So again, this is completely normal. This is what you have to do with the greed videotape. Climb up the stepladder, pull off the vent, and the stepladder will break. So obviously what was happening was, when I put the greed videotape in, I'd go to get the stepladder from the electric room, and as you've just seen, it would disappear. Which would piss me off. And there's not one to find anywhere, which is the worst thing. 
there is not another step ladder in the entire house or anything to climb on so this is why I had to do it this way so again as you can see it has disappeared and at this point I'm thinking hmm this is not looking well again check for Bernard the alien as well while you're there um, and I don't know why I've done it this way but this seemed to work so I've done the whole thing first took the vent off broke the step ladder and then I went and put the greed videotape in obviously it took a little bit longer but it actually appeared for me this time so hopefully if you do have an issue the same as me then this is the way that it can hopefully be fixed for you so stick it in again the tiktoker generation extremely confused about how a vhs works and well i'm with you so now we can head back down and at this point i'm genuinely thinking that i cannot complete the game because you know there's no step ladder um <laughs> But as we'll be able to see, obviously we've done the whole boiler room section. We've pulled the vent off. And one, and a two, and a three. ba bomb, bomb, bomb. Oh, it appears as if magic and like no bug happened. Oh, I was extremely happy at this point. <laughs> um, but now that we have done the, or have got the stepladder, we can now place it in that same boiler room, climb up and then just climb through the vent with the lighter on now again if you do need a particular lighter if you haven't got a lighter for whatever reason i found one in the bathroom so hopefully um either check the parents room and check the bathroom if you're needing a lighter as well uh just to be on the safe side but um yeah just keep climbing through for the minute anyway ah happy times Right, here we go, we enter this sort of uh, big final bosses um, area. We're going to sign the contract, the you don't give a f contract. Which, I mean, he does it without hesitation, so, you know, probably in his head, he doesn't give a flug. And when we've signed that, I hope you feel good, Dwayne. You're not Dwayne Johnson. You're not Dwayne the Rock. You're more Dwayne the Cock. Anyway, again, crouch down. There are a whole bunch of mannequins here as we go through the door. Crouch down, run as fast as you can, and just head for the middle, which is where the third mirror mask will be. Pigeon chests were back, but that is three out of seven of the uh, Mirror Mask VHS tapes that we have gotten. So thank God we managed to get that greed one out of the way. So hopefully you wouldn't have had a problem like that. You could have just put in the tape, grabbed the stepladder and done it a lot quicker than I did, but I had to do it that way, otherwise it wouldn't appear. So there we go, that is the third one done. We can now go ahead and do the fourth VHS tape now. So again, take out Greedus. Greedus McWeedus. Pop that back in the um, VHS box, ting, whatever. And now we can go for the fourth one, which is Indifference. So go, that is the one. So Indifference, I believe this is the longest one. I think this comes in at around... Uh, 15 minutes I think uh, just because it's a basically a lot of walking a lot of walking and a lot of talking as well So there you go kid playing on the beach Wait until the um, screen changes. You don't have to wait. Um, I just do anyway just to be On the safe side just so we know what we're doing right so a whole bunch of doors Okay So with this one we need to find six strange picture frames and the first one is through the kitchen 
into this little hallway on the right. Make sure to turn the light on if you haven't already, if you're still a bit scared of the dark, as I am. And the first frame is just at the top right there. Next, we can head through the door, basically into the second living room area. Again, check in Bernard the Alien if you haven't yet. Ignoring the phone for now, we will answer that later on. She's been on the phone for almost three hours now, and that is uh, pretty impressive. But the second frame is just next to the altar type thing there, right next to the chair. Happy days. And the final one then, we are going to whip a lighter out, just in case. Man, again, you know, whoever's on the phone has some incredible patience, or she has nothing to do with her life. So what we're doing now is heading um, upstairs, we're going into the parents' bedroom, into the nice light lit area. But we're going into the parents' bedroom, and the third one is going to be just in the wardrobe. <laughs> Stop turning the light off. I've had enough of being as scared of the dark. Anyway, the third strange frame is just in the open wardrobe right there, so that one is fine. Blech. Turning the light off. Such an inconvenience. Uh, there is another lighter. There is another lighter. Hopefully it'll always be there. I'm not sure if that's, again, randomly generated or not. Uh, but if you do need another lighter, there is one right on the bathroom. Alright, so the next we are heading back down to the basement to basically finish it. So that's what we've done, sort of went from up upstairs to downstairs. And the next one is in the storage room, maybe our hammer and everything is. And if we just keep uh, going all the way around, the, the fourth one is going to be right there in front of our face. Okay, tidy bob of buff pants. So I don't know if I was a bit quick there, so I was just showing you exactly where it was. Right, for number five, let me just get my bearings a minute. I say bearings, we're still in the basement. In the freezer room, next to where Bernard the Alien could appear, right up there, very easily missable, that one as well. Right up in the ceiling, just above the freezer. And the sixth one is in the electric room. And it's right on top of these bins and everything, so almost walked past it. But that should be all of the frames done. Now what we have to do is put these strange frames up. So if we head through the door and into this little cubby hole area with the lamp is and everything you need to manually place all six frames on and that will enter the way for us Alright, so when we enter the door then, again, there's no enemies or anything in this area, it's literally just a big one, but we are going to have the time of our life and get our jaw swinging right now. Let's pill up, baby. Take all the six pills and the locks will start coming off. Of course, what we are uh, figuring out is Dwayne was an alcoholic and a complete drug mule as well, so, you know, maybe he deserved what was coming to him as well. Ignoring your family for drinking drugs. Just saying. It's a bit of a douche nozzle move. So, pilling up your life and trying to head through obviously didn't work. I mean, Dwayne's jaw is swinging right now, so... I mean, we wouldn't even know that we were sort of... ...dead right now. But what we have to do then is just interact with each door. So the first one falls down. Okay, we're not getting through that way. The second one, all that does is get out a whole bottle of pills. Um, we'll come back to that one later. Um, interact with the next one, it's jammed. The next one just has a table with glass of water in it, and the next one has a pigeon-chested 150 kilo bench press in high school guy doing a little painting for some reason. 
the uh, final chain will eventually unlock and we can now head through. Oh, and what's this? We've got a whole depressing area just, just for us. Guilt, suffering, grief, hatred. And he's only feeling like this now because he's dead. And, uh, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a good boy when he was alive. And that's not a spoiler alert, by the way. We're almost three hours into the game now. Surely you should realise that Dwayne is pretty much dead. And that is why we can't see his arms or anything. Because he's a ghost trapped in the middle between heaven and hell. Purgatory, except it's not a very good purgatory. So again, we are just going on a linear path. Um, hey, buddy. Pigeon. Pigeon chest. You okay, buddy? Oh. Oh, you've got a nice package. Oh, that must be me then. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, just keep walking past everyone's unlucky crybabiness, I suppose. And the reason we need both our hands free is so we can row, row, row our boat gently down to hell. So we can get fudged up and punched in the gel -itals. Nah, nah, bollocks, I screwed it. Screwed it up, sorry. Anyway, all we're doing is going straight for the time being. Very, very nice. Nice relaxing row, row, row your boat. <laughs> hey, that guy reminds me of someone. Uh, oh, oh, wait, no man. Hey buddy, you okay? What you doing lying on the floor there? You're just gonna shoot yourself in the head, right? You okay then? I mean, obviously, if you haven't figured it out by now, this is Dwayne's descent into complete madness, drinking himself and then potentially shooting himself in the head. That's unlucky. Um, well, I guess all we're gonna do then is just keep heading up towards the lighthouse for now. Could be um, a couple of invisible walls. Maybe it's just the way the steps are placed, so just, just be careful. Makes no difference. Uh, it's just a slight minor inconvenience. Hey man, could you just tell me where... Whoa, let's take a look at that. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna teabag your ass for uh, old meme's sake. Um, <laughs> so we are at the top. What we're gonna do then is just head through the door. The mirror mask man is going to appear on the TV, talk a bunch of crap. You can sit there and listen to him if you want, but all we're going to do is just keep heading up. Keep on heading on up. Keep on walking on up. And now at this point, I kind of just feel like a Homer Simpson where he's about to take a about to take a pill to end it all. When he says, ah, oh, stairs, this wasn't part of the deal. Ah. Uh. everyone enjoys their time here.
explain this to me. Please talk to me. I love you, Duane. I want to help you. First the alcohol and now this? Who prescribed you this and why? I want to know so I can help you through it. Are you slowly going insane, Duane? Should we be worried because we are? Recently, you've been scaring everyone with your cold indifference. Are you thinking of leaving us? What do you want to run from so bad that you drug yourself every day? Do you want to die, Duane? I could help you with that, you know? I'm only with you because you have money. It's probably blood money, but I don't care. I don't care about you. If you, you want to die, die, I'll, I'll happily, happily oblige. Do you want a rope? Want me to kick the bucket? Life would be so much easier without your mopey face around you, delusional fuck. Want me to stab you with seven knives? Want me to rip the jaw off your ugly face? How about I break both your legs and leave you to rot in a cellar? You're a disgrace! People despise you. I despise you. Your children despise you! You're horrifying. You should die. You know what? Forget it. I don't want to help you die. Do it yourself. I won't help you into release. Kill yourself by yourself alone. And go to hell where you belong! And that's the end of that chapter. And it actually is, because we have now finished that videotape. With, um... I mean, I don't know why Dwayne is feeling all remorseful. By the way, we are back in the room. Took me a while to figure that one out. Pick up the mirror mask that is on the chair. And that is number four out of seven done. So, we are just going to be heading straight back to the living room. Again, obviously, still checking Bern Bernard, the alien, on all the desks and everything. Uh, but yeah, I don't know why Dwayne is feeling a bit of... Regret right now, you could have done that when you were alive, <laughs> just saying, pal. You know. But anyway, here we are then, back in the living room. Nice and cosy, all deathly haunted and everything, so obviously do the same thing. We're going to whap it out. The, 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 the videotape, by the way, that's all we're whapping out. Putting it back in the box, and then we are going for the fifth one, which is Pride. Now, of course, like I said, uh, the sixth and seventh one, which is Prison and Affliction. Uh, prison is... Technically, and I'm saying this with quotation marks, the hardest one. But there is a way in the game that we can make it super piss easy. So don't you worry about that. I've got you covered. So Pride, have a look at the TV. What's going to happen next? To win a thousand pounds on you've been framed. Oh, well she falls out and lands on her head. Oh, that's, that's not very funny. What kind of hell is this? So, where we need to be going then, again, that one could be quite tricky to figure out on your own, but there should be a glass that appears with a key in it. So make sure to be grabbing that Omega symbol. Uh, basically, where we're heading now is back down to the basement. Uh, we're going to go through the garage way. We should have the garage and we should have the basement key right now. Um, but what we're going to do is flick on the light and we're actually going to head upstairs for the first time. We haven't gone up here yet. Um, but that H symbol is actually down in the basement, but we need to come up here first. Move these boxes out of the way. Again, right trigger, and obviously moving it with the left stick. Again, it makes things are a lot harder to do when you've got no arms and everything. But interacting with this Omega symbol box, there we go, that'll open that up. And what do we have? Treasure or anything? No, we've got what looks like one of those bull rings that you stick in your nose as a piercing. Okay. Well, that's better than money, I suppose. Um, that door is not even a door. That stinks of a penal hole, so we can just head back down. And like I said, we are going to go into the garage, uh, go into the basement using this door. But of course, we need the basement key, which is oh, the garage room key, sorry, which we have. Flick on the light so you don't get as scared like I did. I mean, I'm not as scared. I'm a man. I'm a man, and men don't get scared of spooky things. 
And Christ know why I said it in that voice there. But welcome to the basement. So, where are we heading, you ask? Back down into that little mannequin room section. Again, I ask, why has somebody got a mannequin section? We all know they're just going to come out and be alive and kill you. So have a look at this trap door. This is what I mean by this one was pretty tough to figure out legit. Um, because <laughs> you wouldn't have, you definitely wouldn't have had a look here unless you were um, having a look through the house. And then just interact down and go for a fly, fly down. So, this bit is actually a timed section, but I think the uh, it's quite generously timed, as you'll be able to see, because I was messing up. But what you can do is uh, climb up here, uh, grab the stool, and just push it straight through. Now, you're going to start hearing an alarm. That means this section is starting to get timed. So, head down to the right, and then grab this axe. There we go. So the alarm's going off now. What you need to do, uh, for some reason I was messing up like hell here, but what you need to do is actually just look at the chair and interact with the chair to get back up. But for some reason I started picking up the stool, dropping the stool, then dropping the axe, and I don't even know what the hell I was trying to do. But <laughs> interact with the chair. I did even see the symbol there to climb back up. There we go. So we make it eventually. If you need another lighter, there is one just on the desk to the left of us right there. That's if you need another lighter. Otherwise, interact with this wall directly in front of us. Um, whap your lighter out and then just head straight through. So, like I said, it is timed. You do, the time is quite generous, but, you know, try and do it ASAP without pissing around like I just did. Thank you there as well for the game for using the subtitle for Coffin. I didn't know what the su I, I wouldn't have guessed that at all, but... Um, <coughs> subtitle Cough. Thank you. Thank you again, game. Alright, so we are back in the house now. Really confused and everything. And all we got to do now is, obviously, as you do, follow the bloody footprints. Just in case, you know. And all we're doing then, we're just basically heading back into the mannequin room. Uh, where we're going to find the fifth out of seven mirror mask pieces. So, we're starting to get... We're getting there now. We're getting there. Two more to go. And like I said, the prison one is meant to be tricky. But there is a way that I assume the game, um, the developers have put in anyway. Uh, to make it a bit easier. So, there's mirror mask five. So, once we're done with this, just head straight to the living room. And now, here it is for prison. Now, basically, the, the reason why prison is meant to be very difficult is because you've got to smash four walls in this sort of narrow hallway, but you've got to do it in the complete darkness with Lewis the Ink Squidward Tentacle guys after you. And again, it's completely random where and when he shows up, etc. Uh, but, 
Luckily, if you've got a light bulb on you, um, you can just keep switching the light bulbs. Basically, in the room that we're, we're about to go in, there are already two light bulbs that we can use to switch. And he basically never comes after us. The light bulb for me has now disappeared, so before putting the switch, uh, before putting the VHS tape in, it's probably worth um, just grabbing that light bulb and putting it on you, just to make it even easier. If you've got um, two or three light bulbs, you can make it as easy as hell. Uh, but I'm going to show you the easy way anyway, rather than the supposedly legit way of doing it in the dark. So we're going to the basement, back into the mannequin room. Because, you know, that's that's the way you want to do games, isn't it? You want to try and get them as easily done as possible, unless, you know, you want a... Like, don't crap me up again. Stupid Dolores or Lucy or whoever the hell that was. Anyway, when we get here, a cutscene will appear. But like I said, you want to do things the easy way, unless you like a challenge and you want to challenge yourself, that's also fine. But I am going to show the easiest way to do this. So, uh, we can just head back down, the basically the way we came, and we're into this hallway with an, a big exit sign. Bunch of light bulbs. What we need to do is hammer these four walls, well, those two, and the next two, uh, which are coming up on our left and right. Now, as we grab the sledgehammer, it's going to go into complete darkness. And the uh, we've only got two light bulbs by this exit sign. Luckily, though, we can actually take the light bulbs out and put them in the other one. But do not go too quickly. If you go too quickly, Lewis, he appeared on the left of me and killed me around the corner. So, wait a couple of seconds before moving on, just like Lucy earlier on. So, uh, what we're going to do then, we can stand under the one light, right trigger, by uh, obviously interacting with the light bulb using the right trigger, and put it in the next one, and then keep doing this. Now, the process, of course, is slower, but it really saves you a lot more hassle... And then just smash the wall at the end there. But it does save you a lot more hassle trying to fumble around in the dark, find a new way. And then having to try and escape Squidward Tentacles guy. Uh, this way I found it easier and he never appeared for me. So hopefully this is just the easiest way that we can do this. So um, yeah. So smash sledgehammer your way through each side. We're going to go down here. And basically we are coming up to an achievement that you can only get in this area. So this is very important that we get the special gift achievement in this area as well. And you'll be able to see what it is. Uh, so as we sledgehammer this wall in a good few times. Come on! Uh, I was going to say Daryl then. Dwayne, use your strength. So we need a box to climb up into the boy's bedroom right there. And the box is basically behind one of the other uh, walls that we were in. So again, what you need to do is just keep doing exactly what I'm doing here. Staying under the light, interacting with it, and then just sledgehammer your way through the other two walls. And so, as we sledgehammer this one, this is where the box will be that we can use to climb up into the boy's bedroom where the achievement is. And now also, by the way, the sledgehammer's broken. So after you sledgehammer all four walls, the sledgehammer will break, so that's fine. Now, you'd think this would be kind of tricky to do, but it's really not bad. All we need to do is just put the box under the um, middle light, or the light that you're going to stand under, and then we can just grab the next light and just keep on doing what we're doing. So... Again, it's not too tricky, it's not too bad, uh, but this is why I left, for one, this, roo uh, this room for last, 
And you can also see why I told you to bring as many light bulbs as you can, because yes, you can do it with two, but if you had three or four that you could just use as well, that would make your life even easier. So obviously we need to be heading towards the exit sign. That is where the boys' bedroom is. And I tell you what, I better not say too much more than that, because I could get arrested if I say let's go and creep up into the boys' bedroom by um, bashing his wall open and using a box to climb in. Don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> Please don't arrest me or cancel me. So there we go, grabbing the box. Again, like I said, this is a slower process, but I tell you what, it just saves so much paranoia and hassle where you where you eventually find your way down to a wall, but then you think, oh, right, is Lewis going to come? I mean, attack me. <laughs> Lewis better not come. It'll all be black, black ink, I suppose. There we go. So there you go. We see the boy's bedroom. Now, again, what you can do is just take the box and then run towards it if you want. But me, I was being a bit overly cautious and a bit overly paranoid, to be honest. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing this whole light trick until we get to the end. So pick up the box again, slam it to the end, and then just go ahead and climb up. There we go. Job done. And the achievement is to the right in this wardrobe. Open it up, and it is another Easter egg <laughs> from Johnny to you. Um, very shining related Easter egg. Another fantastic Easter egg, actually, to be honest. And that is how you get that particular achievement. So make sure to be grabbing this then before we leave. Otherwise, you'll have to basically replay Raken's chapter and just do that prison bit again. But you don't really want to be doing that. That is where the sixth. Sorry. <laughs> I'm out of breath. A fat man's out of breath. That is where the sixth mirror mask piece is. You could have just gotten to the end there, but um, again, got paranoid that Lewis can grab me at any time. And I'm not really up for being grabbed from behind and struck with a whole bunch of black ink all over my face. It's not my kind of thing. Not yet, anyway. So that is six out of seven done then. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the easiest way to do the... Uh, prison section rather than fumbling around in the dark and being scared that ink boy is going to come up you C come on come attack you <laughs> so anyway heading back to the living room we are finally going to do the final one before we just grab the last couple of collectibles and end the game now this affliction one is uh, this one's about 10 minutes long and lewis only appears in one bit and it is definitely not as Creepy and hardcore as the prison section, so there we go. Oh, I suppose prison and guys grabbing you from behind and uh, attacking you and doing things to you. Yeah, that's. I suppose that all makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, we're going to grab the affliction tape, <laughs> pop that one in. And what we need then is the crowbar for this particular section. It's in where we started Dolores' chapter, the old Lick Malteser, but we actually have to grab the crowbar, so of course we need to head to ye old storage room. There it is. Uh, grab the crowbar, and then we can head to our Malteser-headed Nan's room. She, gen she genuinely did look like just a bald Nan with a few uh, strips of hair attached to it, to be honest. But uh, anyway... Hey, I found that hot. What a beautiful little angel pie she was. Not up the stairs, into this door where we found Dolores' chapter. Turn on the light in case you're scared of the dark, like I always say, just in case. And we've got this not obvious looking uh, bunch of uh, floorboards that we can rip up. All we got to do is head down the hole, turn your light on, and just keep walking down the linear path until we open up this big steel door at the end. I mean, fair play to Dwayne. He, um... He had a lot of hidey holes in this house. And I refuse to believe that there is a big giant bunker as well. Um, <laughs> just hiding underneath the guy's house. But uh, there we go.
So here it is then, this mega weird bunker, which is going to keep going all the way to the end for now. Um, that was just underneath, chilling underneath Dwayne's house. Do you think the workers kept coming in through the door and kept going into there? Hi, Mrs. Dwayne's wife. We're just, we're just going to work in our underground secret bunker, which is just underneath your house, and the only way we can get in is through the floorboards. So through the end, we're going up these metal steps. And to the left, well, there's only one way to go, really. And, then we've, and just push this button right here. That's basically going to move a bunch of pipes right there, which was in our way just now. So we're going to head back down, uh, head back the way we came, and then take the next huge left where the pipes were. And so as we head through this big steel door, head to the left hand side first. Uh, basically in this room is the only time I believe that Lewis, uh, Squidward Tentacles Lewis appears. But we can easily um, get get away from him so that's fine. Uh, but I, I still do this chapter as, you know, as quick as we can anyway just to get it done. But on this tray right here is Lewis Taylor's key. As we head down, Lewis is going to appear here. There we go. As soon as you see him, turn back around. Again, you see something like that, you'd think you'd uh, run a bit faster. But climb up onto this table right at the end and then climb in through the vent. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that is the only time uh, Squidward appears in this section. Uh, the camera gets a bit um, awkward here as we are trying to look at Lewis. Still, there we go. So just keep heading forward, um, you know, there's no point stopping around, you know, we want to get this game done as it, basically as quickly as we can. So we've basically just headed out the vent over to the other side. Now again, at this point, I genuinely was paranoid he was going to come and um, uh, slice me up. But head down the stairs and then just go up to the other side. Now again, the, the jogging is, is not particularly good. You see an ink man like that, you see a squid with tentacles like that coming after you, you're going to be running a lot faster than the slowest jog you'll ever see. And we're going to be heading to the left in this locker room. See a bunch of guys whipping each other with towels. <laughs> Always fun. And obviously we go into the only one that has a bunch of ink all over it. Maybe he's seen a pretty octopus that he enjoyed. Right, um, open it up, grab the employee's magnet card. And then just head out the way we came and back down the stairs. I mean, that's why octopus is ink, right? They, they see other hot octop female octopuses. Or male octopuses, you know, we're, we're, we're in that kind of state now where everything and everyone is attractive. Um, but use the employee card there with the magnetic ting. And this is where we can open the door. And move on to the brown wooden door of life. Oh, tidy Bob Buff Pants. We are genuinely now coming to the end, and we've got less than half hour now of the video left. So keep on going, keep on going. And what you need to do is just look at the apple. If the apple doesn't interact, um, if the cutscene doesn't start playing here, literally head to the left ever so slightly as I do. It, it literally took me about two minutes to realize I had to go slightly to the left <laughs> for, for the cutscene to play.
The first thing Dwayne has eaten all game, and the apple turned into crapple. That's an that's annoying and unfortunate. Maybe that's what you get for being an alcoholic pillhead, though. You're not allowed to eat in purgatory. Right. Anyway, make sure to pick up these seventh out of seventh mirror mask pieces, and that will get you the achievement. And also, what it'll get you is the ability to get the good ending. So it will unlock eventually. And that's it, and that's basically all of the missions done in the game. Now all we've got to do is get the two endings and a whole bunch of collectibles. Well, I say a whole bunch, there's not a lot left to do. Right, so what do we do next? I think I'm going to do the Matryoshka dolls now. In fact, no I don't. I'm actually going to show you um, where we can get the, the void ending, the bad ending. And it is exactly where we were with Reagan's videotape. And you can see this fresh paint on the wall. So choose to accept it. Uh, again, you're going to need the crowbar to smash this bit open anyway. Uh, but let me just quickly explain the void ending. And we'll go into further depth in just a little bit. So we're going to open up this, like I said, this lovely piece of fresh paint on the wall. I bet some plasterers, well actually some plasterers laughing now. You just destroyed the hole, but he's been paid about £7 million for it. Happy days! So, after all this then, this hole is open. Of course, we are at the point where we finished Raken's chapter and got the prison uh, VHS tape. Head in, and we're going to go basically down some steps and through another steel door, where it's an empty room with just a gun on the table. Now, we're going to get the void ending first before we do the uh, family reunion good ending. Uh, you can make a manual save here. I do make a manual save just uh, just in case you can come back to it. It doesn't really make a difference though. But we can interact with the revolver. Oh, thank you. Just before we um, blow our brains out, the baby monitor is now in the storage room. Right, good to know. And you see six bullets that are loaded. So press A to put the gun to your head. And then press A again to fire. Now, to get the void ending, all we have to do is keep coming down to this room and using the guns. Uh, keep, keep using the gun to shoot yourself. And as each time you do, you will see one bullet missing. So we need to do this a total of seven times uh, to get the void bad ending. But we can reload a manual save anyway. Or we can reload a, yeah, reload a manual save to get the um, good ending. So that makes no difference. So, we've just used one bullet, so the next time we come down here, um, one bullet will be missing. And also, as you'll be able to see, when we wake up, we're going to wake up in basically the room that we started. There is going to be a mark on the floor just in front of the door, you can probably just see it. Uh, but basically, uh, the more times we shoot ourselves, the more the marks uh, appear. You can just see the one symbol there, that means we've shot ourselves one time. So... That is how to get the void ending, but again, we'll just come back to that in just a little bit, because what we are going to be doing now is grabbing the Matryoshka dolls. So the first one is, if we go into the progress room right here, um, the they're not in this these drawers, they're in the corner, just in the sort of next area, crouch down, where we got the far-reaching hook. And there we go, so if we crouch down, the Matryoshka doll is hidden, tucked, Tucked away perfectly on the left hand side there. So that should now be 4 out of 10. Because of course you should have 3 from Lucy's chapter as well. And I tell you what, whoever's on the phone. God damn, that is incredible persistence. Incredible persistence. <laughs> so next place we go in is all the way up into the parent's bedroom. And then the son's bedroom as well. Now, just before the VHS tapes, I think there, there was a whole black mark on the wall right in front of us uh, but basically Lewis the ink man was there before you done the videotape so just in case you went up there um, you could have died easily right there as well um, but in the right hand 
bottom right hand side drawer, that is where the next Matryoshka doll is. So, whack it up, get those big, black, beautiful, death solely stary eyes into your collection. Uh, whack the light on. Did I whack it on or did I whack it off? No, looked off then. Um, but yeah, so I was a, kind of a bit paranoid here because he appeared right here in front of me with the black ink, as you can see on the wall. Again, not sure if that's random or afterwards. Um, it's all good anyway. So interact uh, with the Matryoshka doll, which is just, as you can see, in between the wardrobe and the boxes. My English is starting to lose all of its sanity as well. Maybe I need to take a pill, get my English back. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God, man. <sighs> Okay, and then what we're going to do is head into the kitchen now. Um, basically, if we head into the little dining room area... Ooh, it's all thunder and lightning. Scary stuff. Head into this middle cabinet, and that is where the next... Matryoshka! Oh, Matryoshka! Matryoshka! Let's get out of the kitchen right now, unless you're hungry, bro. Because the apples didn't agree with your stomach, because you're a frigging ghost, man. Right, all the way in... To the left, the next Matryoshka doll is in the freezer. Again, keep checking if Bernard the Alien is there, if he hasn't appeared for you yet, but hopefully he <laughs> has. Open up the freezer, the Matryoshka doll is sticking her big pointy head out. So that's the next one that we need to grab. The next one is in the part where the, the mannequin room is, and we've got to go through that stinky little hallway, the one that absolutely crapped my pants up earlier. Uh, where Lick Maltese head sort of ran through it. So, and it's just, this This one is a very, again, very cleverly hidden, easily missable. But go up this first steps, and then it's just in between the bunch of steps right there. So, as you can probably just see it, so crouch down if you can't grab her. But she is um, hidden in between those steps right there. So, very easily missable. There we go, there she is. So just thought I'd double, um, double check just to show you that that is exactly where she is. Right, we have got one more. We've got one more. We need to get that in the garage. Um, and then the achievement will unlock for us. Coming up to the end of the game now. So everyone, if you've got spare pants, then you should be good to go. You shouldn't really be crapping your pants at anything now. Thank God. Um, oh, well, I've got a lot of washing to do anyway, so don't know about you guys and gals, but, uh, <laughs> anyway, heading into the garage, the final one is actually where we got the Omega ring from earlier on, so start hanging up the stairs, actually, one more shit pants time, bloody hell, why, why, just, just why, why, we're almost done with the game, why are you still spooking me, man, <laughs> I can't handle it anymore, this game has genuinely aged me by about a year, so, heading back into the hidey hole that we were earlier on. <laughs> it's generally... I was going bald before, but now, well, I'm screwed. Turn around. That is where the final Matryoshka doll is. Poifek as hell, man. And that is a very rare achievement that we can unlock. So, that's all the Matryoshka dolls found and done. So, the next thing that we're going to be doing is finding all four of the neighbor's pages. And there's a, sp a particular way that you've got to do this. So, the first one... Has been here since the beginning of the game, so you could have picked this up at the beginning of the game if you wanted. And that is tucked directly underneath the front door. So again, try and leave if you want, but we can't yet. Right, so that'll get us the achievement then. The neighbours. I think that's how uh, the neighbours theme tune goes, right? Anyway, heading to the second living room. And now, finally, after three... Almost three and a half hours of non-stop ringing, we can finally answer the phone. I mean, you could have answered it uh, um, at the very beginning anyway, but... Again, uh, we need to obviously get rid of our crap. Um, apparently, we, we need two hands to answer one phone. Must be a bloody heavy phone. Oh, in fact, no, we don't. We've still got the lighter. So, it's Rose, our neighbour. Jesus Christ, Rose, you've got nothing else to do in your time. Gee, just... Get alive, damn it! I apologize for that, but I'm getting a bit worried. I haven't seen you out of the house in about three weeks. Is everything all right? Could you call me just to let me know everything's fine? All right. Bye bye. Okay, thanks, Rose. That was very insightful. You you wasted three and a half hours of your life. 
basically to tell me that your husband's a douche nozzle. Okie dokie. So, <laughs> now we can go on ahead and grab the second neighbor's page. I don't think this appears until you answer that first phone call, by the way. Which is why we're doing it in this order. So head down into the sort of basement area. And it's in the top of the drawer right here. So that is page number two out of four. Now what we have to do is go back to the second living room. Answer the phone again because Rose is... I mean, she's about... A, her patience levels just drop to absolute zero right then. Um, but basically, if the phone doesn't ring, what we can do is the whole manual save trick. So, it's not ringing for me. So what we're going to do is save the game, not pause the game. <laughs> Man, I was completely balls after this bit. So, save the game, uh, any slot that you want, of course, that is fine. Uh, so, save the game, and then we need to reload that same save slot that we just done. So save the game, then reload that same one, and then the phone should start ringing. Again, Rose's impatience is basically the same as you, turtle heading when you're about to crap your pants. It's, it's, it's not very good. It's not a good feeling. So there you go. So it should start ringing. So now we can answer it again. And Dwayne's like, look, love, I've, I've just been chased by monsters, demons, and all types of ghostly, spooky crap. I, I don't need you bitching about your disgusting alcoholic husband leave me alone if you need some recommendations i could ask frank he sure loves his tv shows he's either eating sleeping or in front of an idiot box sometimes a sloppy mixture of all three the hardest thing i've ever had to do is wrench the remote controller from his hands it's the only thing he loves more than me Probably because of the mute button. I could just go on and on and on and on about things. But look at me talking your ear off. Maybe he's right about that mute button. Just never mind. Dwayne, I'm sorry. I'll let you go now. Talk soon. <laughs> okay, thanks Rose. See you again soon, you old bat head. Um, alright, anyway, after that boring conversation and you finally wake up, he's glowed in front of the TV. Right, thank you, it took three and a half hours to tell me that. Literally could have popped over in that time and saved my ass, but there we go. Uh, so I take a pill here, just in case, again, you don't have to if you don't want, but depends how your insanity levels is. But the third... Oi, turn the light back on, you cock-ass ghost bell-end head. Yeah. Anyway, the third neighbor's page is in the living room right in front of the TV. So there it is. Now the phone will ring again. I don't show the phone call uh, this time because uh, we can just go ahead and get the fourth neighbor's page, which is upstairs in the parents' room. But you should answer it because, god damn, it is a creepy... Just listen to it. It is bloody creepy. I don't show it, but answer the phone again. Rose will answer. <laughs> it is a lot creepier than the first two phone calls. Anyway, head into the same sort of linked uh, linked room, this sort of cupboardy area, and that is Neighbours page four out of four. Fantastic. We are, well, we are coming up very, very close to the end now. Not a lot left to do. In fact, what we are going to do is just go ahead and grab the void ending. So then, with the void ending, like I said earlier, oops, sorry, bashing, bashing the desk right there. So yeah, with the void ending then, what you have to do is just keep coming to this place and keep shooting yourself in the head another six times. Basically until all the bullets are gone, so as you'll be able to see, the one we used earlier has gone. That is literally it, so we just have to keep coming back, shooting ourselves in the temple, and... And basically, we have to do it again, even when all the six bullets are gone. We have to shoot ourselves in the head with a seven, for a seventh time to get the void ending. And that is exactly... Um, that, that's all you have to do, basically. Um, I'm going to show you 
uh, one more time. I'm not going to show you the whole, um, the, the rest of the six times because, you know, that's, yeah, I'm just cutting it down for a bit of time and everything. Uh, but what I will show you is the quickest and uh, the quickest and easiest route just to get back to that point. Um, even though you should probably, yeah, you probably know where you're going by now. You know, we've basically hit the, <laughs> hit the end of the game. We've hit the end of the road. Let's do this. Uh, but that, like I said, then, is how you get the void ending. And as you'll be able to see, right by the door, there is now two marks there. Because you shot yourself in the head twice. So, bit, bit of limping. Alright, you shot yourself in the head, not the leg, Dwayne. Stop taking a piss, Dwayne the Cock Johnson. Uh, again, the phone will ring. And this is where the third, the creepier of the phone calls appears for Rose. So, again, you can answer that if you want. But, like I said, you can just head down... And then head back into the garage. Taking the next door down. And then when we come out of the other side, you will see the freshly painted, well, l lack of freshly paint now. So these are the ways, uh, that's just the quickest and easiest way to get there. So literally all you've got to do now is just shoot yourself in the head. Keep going until there's no bullets in, in it. Shoot yourself in the head again and that is how you will get the bad ending. Ah, why not show you one more time? Because he can dance, he can dance, he can dance. I can sing! Hi there, Troy McClure, back with another achievement guide. No, nobody can do a Phil Hartman. Nobody can do a Phil Hartman like Phil Hartman. Um, right, so we are going down. And oh, by the way, I can't sing. Cats have killed themselves because of my singing. Just, to me, it's probably not that good. Uh, it doesn't sound like I could get on the uh, the old Britain's Got Talent anytime soon. Maybe I'll just stick with the uh, guide making instead. Yeah, but I think everyone's happy with that. So anyway, after we've done, again, this may take around 10 to 15 minutes to do all six bullets. But eventually we will get here and down to this point where we open it back up and there are no bullets left. So aim the gun to your head one more time. Like I said, it's, it, it is kind of a pain in the ass that you've got to keep coming down here it's just sort of prolongs the game when we're you know more or less done with it we are more or less done with the game but doing this prolongs it a little bit further you can actually get this done quite early on in the game um you don't actually have to wait until now you can get it done early on in the game um when the basement opens up but this is it this is the void ending so we wake up in basically the depths hell of nowhere. We're, we're in a well that we can't get out of. Basically telling us it's hell and heaven's at the top. If you want to look at it like that, I don't, it's up to you. Oh, my apple. Well, at least I won't starve to death, Red. <laughs> You're wrong, I will starve to death. So we've got one apple to last me the entire of eternity. Might be a little bit tricky, that one. But to unlock the ending and the credits start rolling, all you've got to do is just start walking in one particular direction. I thought we could just pick up the apple and it unlocked there, but it's not. So all we've got to do is keep walking in one direction and eventually the credits will start rolling and the void ending will appear. So it should be coming up anytime soon.
There we go then. So, fantastic! So that's the first ending, which obviously is a bad ending. We are we have a lighter, some pills, and an apple to last us for all of eternity. Ah, oh, just kill me off now. Although, I suppose uh, Dwayne was good for the pills, wasn't he? You can actually press the start button to make the credits go incredibly quickly. But when the credits are done with, we can now load up. And then what we're going to do is load up the second save slot. Remember before we just answered the phone? And the, the reason for that is we are by the progress room, which is exactly where we need to be. So laid up, uh, load up save slot 2. Um, obviously this was just as we were doing the neighbours pages and everything, so it's not even that far ago. And eventually, man, we're gonna... Oh, there we go. So this time we don't need to answer the phone, we go in heading straight for the progress room. And we have seen the mask. There is the mirror mask, which of course you got all the pieces of the mirror mask by doing all uh, seven VHS tapes. Again, TikTok is a scratch in the head going... I don't know what a VHS tape is. Let me make a TikTok about it. Oh, we need to cancel VHS tapes because it's offensive to TikTokers. Blah. I mean, um, just pick up the mask. <laughs> we're going to put the mask on. And apparently Jim Carrey's going to appear and we're going to start uh, saying words like smoking and stuff. <laughs> uh, sorry, got on a bit of a tangent there, didn't I? So, with the mask on, oh, look at that, it's daytime. Ah, oh, how god daytime is so underrated. God, I've missed you daytime. Please save me from the spookiness. Uh, but basically, we all we're doing is going back down into the basement and going back down to where our gun was. But of course, we've got the mirror mask on. Can't go down the garageway because that's locked now, apparently. But my car's in there. What the hell am I supposed to give my car, bruh? So yeah, we're just heading down, and we've got the mirror mask on now, so everything is all good. Everything is just gravy, baby. And our, f well, you'll see why now, you'll see how kind of a cute ending this is, even though we were complete douche nozzlery um, in, in the real world, in real life when we were all alive, but interact with the door, and that is how you get the family reunion. Good ending! Awesome. Now, even though Dwayne is complete crap baggery, to complete honesty, it's kind of nice to see him reunite with his family, even though it probably appears that he's the one that killed them. Still, hey guys. So, look, sorry about everything that happened in real life. Maybe they're just here to beat the crap out of us. Um, but no, it's a good ending. It's a nice ending. The credits roll, and that is the end of Visage. Um... We still have one more achievement to get, 10 on the 10th, and we can't just skip the credits by pressing the start button, but god damn, wasn't this game just fantastic and shit patently scary? For me, just incredible. So there we go then, that is all of the things that we've got in Visage done. I keep going to say Visage, but it's not, it's Visage. Now what we need to do is basically collect five notes, and to do this you have to go at the bottom to the Hall of Fame here in the main menu. And we're going to open up this door, and there is this whole weird room type of thing. And like I said, so all we have to do then is find five notes. I get kind of a bit lazy here, to be honest. Uh, so apologies about this. Uh, but if we have a look directly in front of us, there's this book. And it says, pages are still missing. So they are the five pages. Now, even though the achievement is called 10 on the 10th, which I started looking for 10 notes, there is only actually five notes to be grabbing, so we're happy days. So the first one is just by the door, you can see it already sticking out of the wall, that is where the first page is. Um, it's telling us that we, uh, how to open our inventory, so thank you for that game, we've already done that though, we should be golden nuggets I believe. So, open up that one, and now what we are going to do, there are Another two notes that are hidden behind picture frames. Six of picture frames in here. This is where the first one is, behind the Charlie Bronson brothers. So, so no offense. But uh, behind the, uh, or you can call him Dr. Eggman from Sonic, up to you, whichever one. And yeah, I do have a check behind each one, behind Curly Fry right there. Uh, not one behind Curly Fry. And now we've got Old Man, not one behind the old ghosty man. 
was the one behind uh, Jim Ryan. I don't know why I said Jim Ryan. He doesn't even look anything like Jim Ryan, I don't think. Now we've got our happy couple, and then we've got Quiff Man. So, we've taken everything that we can out of this area. <laughs> so that should be uh, the three. Yes, the three out of that area. Now if we head back through the door, what we're going to see then is the uh, one on the wall. And there's going to be one on the floor directly in front of us. And that is cool. That is that is literally it. That All we got to do is now is just go into our inventory and put them from the our inventory into the book and that will be 10 of the 10th and visage completely done so i just want to say a huge huge massive thank you one to sad square studio for um giving us this genuine masterpiece such a fantastic fantastic game um really really cool but i want to thank absolutely everyone who followed this guy uh, this guide hopefully you enjoyed the game and i really hope you enjoyed the guide as well and that it helped you in so many ways to get you the full 1000 out of 1000 a uh, big shout out then to everyone who continues to support the channel on um patreon massive shout out thank you so much and for everyone who just continues to interact with me on the daily anyway you guys and gals are all legends don't forget of course to like comment subscribe and share with a friend as well don't forget as well to check me out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And there we go then. I'm going to go and take a lie down. Hope you guys have <laughs> enjoyed this. And hope you go and take a lie down as well. No more shit panting stuff. We're all done. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching again, guys and gals. I'll see you in the next one. B -b -b Big love.